like, where are we? Where are we? Where are we in this universe? In time and space, where are we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's going down the wormhole. Hey, not my fantasy. Welcome back to Not My Fantasy, the show where we talk about fantasy films, the lore that inspired them. I'm Cullen, and I'm just hard launching a new fan base name that I thought of just now. And I'm Hannah, <laughs> and I'm reacting to it live. <laughs> And I'm debating <laughs> how I'm gonna edit it out if I get so sick of it. You're like, but, and I have notes. <laughs> you know, I actually I'm kind of impressed with the the smoothness with which you delivered it. So kudos yeah. on that. I'm loving it. <laughs> and uh speaking of loving it, we have one of my besties here today. We have Alexandra Alamani. Hi everybody. So welcome. excited to join you guys. Yeah, so excited to have such a talented artist. Ew, uh, mm-hmm. Um, You may recognize her from one of the Cinderella posts where it was me at my birthday and she was dressed as one of the rats. Oh, love yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that girl was me. That girl was you. <laughs> um, you won a Ren Faire competition as the rat, right? No. <laughs> oh you didn't because well, it was cottage core and you didn't realize it was cottage core and there was a bunch of beautifully dressed people and i can't i didn't know it was college college cottage core i didn't know that was the theme and i still went for it they loved it yeah <laughs> alex always goes 110 percent. we ran the bootification battle for work halloween we you won the pumpkin carving competition with your Pinocchio pumpkin. Look. Yeah. Yeah, four years in a row. Four years in a row, I have won the Netflix Halloween co- uh, contest. So, uh, wow. Like, so suck on that, haters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me, it just fills my heart. I don't know. It's, it's an una. But yeah, I just love it. I love it. I'm grateful. Grateful every day. Let's say Pitbull says every day above ground is a good day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, happy Why do you Easter. know so much about Pitbull? And <laughs> happy Easter. <laughs> happy Easter. Above ground. You gotta be uh hey. <laughs> yeah, above ground. So because yeah, we're recording this in March. He It'll come out risen. in April. He has already risen by the time this ha- will come out. Um, but I'm honoring my university, my alma mater, Oakland, because in March Madness, they beat Louisville. Uh, And then I think they lost to someone else later, and that'll definitely have happened a long time ago when this comes out, but I'm in my Oakland mug, I'm in my Oakland, or Oakland shirt with my Oakland mug. You're in your Oakland mug. I'm in the mug. You can't see because I have a Zoom background, but I'm in a mug. He's just sitting in the mug, (laughs) cozy, taking a bath. I love, it's like those pictures of like babies sitting in pots. Yes. (laughs) I love those top tier, top tier. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Uh so we're continuing our time travel series month with 2001 Space Odyssey no with 2001 uh Kate and Leopold. Um Hannah picked all the movies for this month because I have never seen this movie and I still way oh I still don't know how I feel about it. Like uh-huh. we'll we'll discover that real time, I guess. Love it. At first I was like I think I hate this. And then I was like, <laughs> I think Hugh Jackman's seducing me. Like, <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. I'm charmed. I'm charmed, you know. Uh, so, charmed, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you had never seen this movie. No, I, I feel like I had never even heard of it. 
and, I was, and then watching it, I was like, oh, is this just the night before Christmas with Vanessa Hutchins? <laughs> but key difference at the end. Key difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> and no Christmas. And famously no Christmas. Um, Yeah, this movie, I don't know when the first time I saw it was. I've seen it a few times. But yet, I always forget this movie. Like, as soon as I watch it, blank slate. It's like I watched it for the first time last night. Um. Uh. I love this movie and I also don't like this movie because of the early 2000s uh, haircut that Ryan has. That haircut. I cannot forgive the person who did her hair. Like that is just so rude. It's so bad. Like the queen of rom coms. Like how dare you do that to her? I do. How dare you do that to mother? (laughs) To mother. She she built this country with her bare hands. And you're gonna Literally. do that to her? You do that. This yeah. whole genre exists because of her, and yeah. so like. And you know what, Nora Ephron, who is not, did not write this movie, and right. you can tell, yeah. Yeah, but this, I mean, I like this movie just as it is, but I also love making fun of it because it is so bonkers. Um, but a net positive film in my life for sure. And it predates both Enchanted and Elf. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But technically, post dates 9 11. This came out like around Christmas of nine oh, after 9 11. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I was going to say fun fact, but it's speaking not of, a fun fact. Speaking of time travel, I mean, the classic meme where someone commented, I just found out China is behind us in time. Why didn't they warn us about 9 11? Mm. Yeah, so you have this FaceTime continuum. Now, Alex, have you seen this movie before? Have I seen this movie? It was <laughs> one of those movies where I just had it, I don't know, probably at the time VHS. And I was like, okay, just going to watch this a hundred times. You know, <laughs> it was, and I was watching it like, oh, was this maybe too mature for me at the time? And I don't think, I didn't hear like pretty much any bad words, anything too crazy. And um I loved it. I think, okay, Cullen knows, like, I, I I don't know, like, I love, like, a classical guy, you know, and yes. so <laughs> maybe this movie had something to do with it, like. <laughs> Four minutes. <laughs> Alex has famously said that in order to date her, uh, you have to look like you would have hang out with Marie Antoinette. Love that. <laughs> I just love a classical man. <laughs> but yeah no i i am sure that this had something to do with it my brain in the past yeah. as a child i'm like okay i've got a type now um yeah because i just loved hugh jackman in this film so much uh yeah. so yes i've seen it there's a, a couple little things too even growing up you know as an artist i would like at the beginning the the beginning scene where he's drawing I just like I remember seeing that on tv and oh I want to go draw that's so cool like oh you could draw architecture like that so I think there's little bits and pieces that kind of stuck with me in my life from this movie and re-watching it was like whoa I remember that core memory right there so yeah I'm gonna re-watch it for this yeah that is fun It, it does seem like very formative I think you're right I feel like if I, I feel like I did see this when I was pretty young and yeah, I don't think like a, like a nine, 10, 14 year old, you know, anywhere in the spectrum of age is like, it's not, this is a pretty, yeah, it's not sexy, like in like, kind of, yeah, yeah, it's very like, I think it's because of him, right. From his, yeah from his past, from the past, I should say. And also Um, kind of when the expectations for a rom-com in the yeah. early 2000s like this is this is kind of a holdover from a 90s rom-com yeah you know like it's this is before like the 27 dresses crazy stupid love era yeah you know um yeah uh did you know this movie was nominated for an oscar no uh, for the sting song in the credits fascinating i yeah. didn't i didn't even listen to the as soon as i saw the credits i'm like i'm gone yeah i was I'm, and there are times when i really enjoyed it and there are times where i'm like okay this two hours i'm feeling it i'm feeling it i'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. um 
<laughs> yeah, I felt like it was a long movie, especially for the time it came out as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a like... rom-com around this time, a cool 90, 95 yeah. minutes. This was too long. We know we're a big fan of a 90-minute movie on this podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so this was directed by James Mangold and written by James Mangold and Steve Rogers, Captain America himself. Yeah. He's like, this is relatable to me. Um, a man out of time. <laughs> a man out of time. Wow, yeah. you're right. Uh, it stars Meg Ryan as Kate McKay, Hugh Jackman as his grace, Leopold, Alexis, Elijah Walker, Thomas Garris, Mountbatten, third Duke of Albany. What was that? Ma- Mountbatten is Prince Philip's I was just going to say, yeah, that's um, literally the Windsor's last name is Mountbatten. So we'll, like, we got to talk about, I'm we'll, so glad you have it in there. Cause <laughs> I literally pause this movie at like three minutes. And that's what Lyle and I talked about for like 15 minutes. We just like yeah. we searched for like, wait, why is this happening? So, uh, Liv Schreiber was Stuart. Liv uh, Schreiber? Bra- Liv Schreiber. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. How to I, say guess, I guess it is one of those names that like you may know the person but you're like i did not know it was spelled that way <laughs> yeah. so i guess Bre- brecken meyer as charlie natasha leone as darcy that was i i totally forgot about that casting uh-huh. natasha, that is so cool when i saw her i was like baby <laughs> uh, uh, bradley whitford as jj not <laughs> the jet plane um equally as sexy uh Paxton uh, Whitehead as Miller in Mountbatten and Spalding Gray as Dr. Geisler. Uh, Hugh Jackman was nominated for a Golden Globe for this for well, Best Lead Actor in a Comedy or Musical. Uh, he was younger than Meg Ryan when this movie came out. Mm. I did the math. Yeah. How much younger? He was like 33 and she was 39. Oh wow! I mean, yeah. she looks pretty good for thirty nine. Yeah, yeah. them look really good. Huh. Yeah, but I feel like I only like Hugh Jackman is like forever fifty. Yes, in my brain, and so I was right. like a baby. He was oh. born and then did this movie the next week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, then he was Wolverine in the Greatest Showman. Uh, so Leopold was initially. And they had to cut these scenes. He was supposed to be Stuart's ancestor. Mm-hmm. And they cut it because they didn't want Meg Ryan to have done an illegal incest. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I have more notes about that when we get to the end of our movie discussion. So um, that's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes sense uh, that, you know, they would get rid of him being the, the ancestor, not even just because of the incest, but also it's like, this movie doesn't need more like it just does no, right right no, no, no. um thank goodness they put yeah. two and two together <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. um but so many close incest also, calls can we just yeah. quickly say that you called it an illegal incest well because that that in wikipedia when they're talking about it they're like that it's would the- technically be an illegal that'd be criminal incest and they're like, that- all right I guess well, incest I isn't guess... always technically considered criminal in some spots. So. Yeah, like so sometimes you know. the Pope would be like, marry your cousin, you know, your right. royalty. You know, so it wasn't an illegal incest. Um right. yeah. um, I'm which... just gonna complicate that later, so I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, which you know, if you're I will be thinking about if I'd rather marry someone from the 1800s or a knight. Comparing this to a night before Christmas. Oh, I thought you were to say from someone from 2001. I'd be like, yeah, me too. I'd really <laughs> have to think about that. I don't know that too. <laughs> uh, and I, I do think, um, I do think the level of inbreeding among the aristocracy, like him. Yeah, I think that yeah. would that gives the medieval period a a, a, a bonus. A, a bonus. Um, yeah. Hmm. So. I do the lore section, you know, this isn't really an adaptation of anything, but we're going to talk about time travel stuff. But I specifically have, you know, I'm not like a nitpicker. Well, I don't hold it super seriously against a movie, but this movie tried to do something historical and that threw me off because I was like, just don't, I guess. 
the dollar yeah. princess thing the the like aristocracy marrying uh like a wealthy american woman was like a trend uh, and the wealthy American woman also often went back and were like, these people are stuffy. Their houses suck. They don't know how to, how to have any fun. So it didn't really work. But uh, old money versus new money. Yeah, truly, truly, truly. They have weird diseases. So the Duke of Albany is a title for a close member of the Scottish and later British royal family. It got to the British family because my girl, Mary, Queen of Scots, gave it to her husband, Lord Darnley. Um, and so then that went to his son, James, who uh, then stepped out of the Stuart line when he became James I of England. And then the Hanovers got it when they ended up with the throne because they were the closest Protestants. Um, New York. So it was often a combined title like Duke of York and Albany. And that's where New York and Albany get their names. Mm. So... Oh, okay. uh, so print the the title kind of ended though with Prince Charles Edward, reigning Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. Uh, he was the last person to have the title because he fought against the British in World War One. Hmm. Um. His dad though was Prince Leopold, Duke of Albany. He was the son of famous influencers Alfred and Victoria. People behind white wedding dresses, Christmas trees, Halloween, you know, mm -hmm. being prudish. Uh, they He was their eighth kid and the youngest son. He was very intelligent, but he suffered from hemophilia, which uh, made him very sickly because, like, you, your blood doesn't, like, clot, so you just, like, hemorrhage blood if you ever, like, mm. fell. Mm -hmm. um, so Victoria, because she married off all her kids, and it's, it's carried, it only affects men, but it's carried through the female line. She essentially like wiped out the monarchies, not wiped out, but like drastically reduced their power. I mean, World War One was a big aspect of that, but also like Prince Alexei of Russia, Anastasia's brother, mm. famously had this, and that's how Rasputin from the song Ra Ra Rasputin. That's famously. how he, yeah, that's how he got in because mm -hmm. he could do stuff with it he knew how to stop the hemophilia and the queen was like i love my son not dying and so people yeah, like obviously she wants to yeah they're like she wants to fuck him and she's like no i just like want my son not to be dying mm -hmm. you know yeah because fun fact about her and her husband they were very hot and they were a love match um oh yeah spicy. rare rare yeah um but so all of this to say yeah victoria gave this inbreeding disease basically every royal family in europe uh and prince leopold duke of albany had it which is why he was so intelligent um but, so he died at well wait he had he had to be a nerd okay he couldn't go and run around so he had to be okay That's i was just like i was like hemophilia equals genius yeah um so he died at 30 leaving behind a daughter and his son who was like his wife is pregnant with his son um mm. he did not invent the elevator but he was friends with the alice who inspired alice in wonderland alice little oh well, that's fun they were friends yeah for not my fantasy yeah full circle for not my fantasy we will <laughs> i'm sure we'll talk about alice in wonderland at some point um but alicia otis was a guy from vermont who invented the elevator in 1852 so the year before prince leopold was born and What's the year in the movie that he comes from? Do you remember? Is it like 1876? The 70s? Okay, cool, so cool, this cool, is cool, cool. while so this Prince Leopold, Duke of Albany, was alive. So yes, yeah, so the elevator would have been invented. So <laughs> I already talked about this in my research. So what they're saying is this Alicia Otis person died. Well, they just make this? Otis the servant, right? I think they're just right. like whatever you know so close so wild so close. yeah it's it's so convoluted to do the duke of albany thing yeah because it's like i mean you may have you know like history buffs out there who are like wait a second or just like people who are like oh duke of albany i wonder if that's real did this happen who google it and they're like what the fuck is going on this movie happened before google that's how they were like no one's oh. gonna know. Oh That's my god. 
And yeah. I, I was going to mention, so speaking of 1876, the day that the photo was taken taken um, with Kate in it uh, was April 28th. And I was like, are you guys going to release this episode on April 28th? <laughs> That'd be uh, weird. No. It's weird that we did pick April, though, for yeah. time well, travel month. Cause, yeah, no, because you planned it because of this. Totally. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, I guess we could move it. <laughs> I mean, well, funny. we could do a post. Uh-huh. Happy Meg <laughs> Ryan goes to the past and gives up all her rights. Rights day. day. <laughs> yep. <laughs> After Women's uh, History, History Month, Month. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, it sounds yeah. like Hannah's done some mythology lore. I mean, I did look up. I tried to get a good grasp on women's rights in the UK mm. before 1876. Um, and I do think they were considered legal entities by this point. So women were legal entities. Yeah, because the famous Caroline Norton. There's a great episode of Noble Blood about it. Uh, if you were married, you were an illegal entity, so you couldn't fight for custody of your own children. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And she was able to get the law changed in England, so then her husband moved the kids to Scotland, so she couldn't get to see them. Oh, is it presumed that she's going to go to England with him? Um, I figured they would stay in the was, U.S., but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he's not a duke I mean, in the U.S. I don't know. I'm very... I think based <laughs> at the end where she was just saying goodbye to her brother, like, love you. Know, it kind of made me feel like she's she's sticking with back in time. Oh, yeah. She's definitely not coming. She's not oh, gonna do you mean the if they're going to stay again. in New York in... Or, yeah, I was like, I figured they would be staying. Well, I mean, she's going to stay in the past, but I didn't think she would be going to England. Oh, They'd see, I was like, Duke England. of Albany is too high a title for them to let him live in the U.S. But I mean, look at Prince Harry. But they they got rid of all his money. But well, then no, again, he was he... marrying, he was supposed to marry to save the money. But then he's marrying someone who has no money. How are they going to live? Well, he was marrying to get money because they said that he yeah. really depleted all their money. So now so, he's marrying someone with no money. But he is about to invent the elevator. <laughs> because of the logic of this movie, apparently. The logic of this movie. Also, this man shouldn't be able to cook. I'm going to say it. Oh, listen. We've got <laughs> all the time in the world. Uh, I'm like, but, he was royalty. Uh, speaking of time, we're going to go way back in time and talk a little bit about about some time travel in mythology um so i have a couple Mm. little fun ones here and it's specifically like waking it's like going to sleep and waking up in the future or uh just like time passing differently and you're all of a sudden in the future very rip Um, van winkle yeah yes i will actually talk about yeah so in hindu mythology uh vishnu purana is a story of uh king ravata pakudmi uh, who travels to heaven and meets the creator and learns that during their travels that many years on earth have passed and then he comes back and you know super far in the future missed all of mm. that stuff um the buddhist Pali canon uh mentions how time just passes differently in heaven than it does on earth um that's also an idea that's uh, explored in just like relativity um and then also in literature and media, like, i.e. Interstellar, which, you know, mm-hmm. may be a movie we explore in the future. Um, in Japan, Mani Yoshu, uh, it's a, a text that features uh, someone who goes under to an undersea palace. And then when they return to the surface, back to his village, he's 300 years in the future. The, three, the year 3000? close <laughs> because was, not much has changed but he was living underwater underwater yeah well everyone was living underwater and oh, yeah. but their great 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 granddaughter was doing fine yeah so but whew, thank god um and then in islam and there's like a, a similar christian myth um of the seven sleepers um so they sought refuge from persecution they were like living in a cave and basically, Allah preserved them for centuries, and they woke up in the future. 
so yeah it's uh it's very common in mythology to kind of the time travel aspect is just like you fall asleep or you go somewhere and you come back and just like everything is completely different that's um, uh really big in like fairy stories too like if you go to fairyland like yeah. time passes differently and you go back and everyone you know is dead you know don't eat the food in fairyland that's kind of a thing yeah so you know what it goes back to all sorts of cultures um oh. but yeah so in sci-fi stories that we're going to talk about these are mostly just like literally like you have you fall asleep and you wake up in the future or you're having a dream of the future mm -hmm. um so that is like the year 2440 a dream if there ever was one by louis sebastian messier from 1770 mm -hmm. that's sort of what that one is is that you know time just kind of passes while you're sleeping or you're dreaming that time is passing while you're sleeping rip van winkle short story by washington irving 1819 this guy gets drunk wakes up in catskills 20 years later oops he missed the american revolution embarrassing so embarrassing but also you know what he survived so yeah you know, i guess that's good for him right um, there's also Looking Backward, which is a novel by Edward Bellamy from 1888. It is a utopian sci-fi novel Ooh. in which a young man in Boston falls asleep at the end of the 19th century and then wakes up over a hundred years later where the U.S. is a socialist utopia. Bernie Sanders is so happy. <laughs> uh, you know, so that one, probably a dream for us, but, yeah. you know. But, you know, um, it was a Cinderella month. Believe in your dreams. Exactly. Maybe they'll come true. Um, and then sort of the opposite of that, we're talking about H.G. Wells again, When the mm. Sleeper Awakes from 1899. Uh, this is a dystopian sci-fi novel where this guy, I think he like takes medicine for his migraines or something, ends up putting himself in a coma for 200 years. And somehow he's just like been preserved and he wakes up in his home in London and it's the year 2100, not quite 3000. And he's actually like the richest man alive, but there's like this trust that's been controlling his money. And they basically established the new world order, a uh, very anti-socialist. Uh, oh. Yeah. So sort of the opposite, uh, yeah. utopian, dystopian. That's crazy. So do you think really H.G. Wells is related to Elf's mother, Susan Wells? Because mm, I ever see the name Wells, my brain goes, Susan Wells had me. Uh, wow. Mm, now, H.G. E. Wells, he did the time machine. Did he do War of the Worlds as well? I, or that, that sounds worse. No, no, that's not worse. Uh, yeah, H.G. Wells. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. That's such a good, <laughs> wow, hot take. I'm like, H.G. Wells comes with some great story ideas. Literally, I mean, he's kind of like the sci-fi, the father of sci-fi, I think. Yeah, if um, it's like it's like him and I almost said Lisa Frankenstein, but uh, Mary Shelley. <laughs> yeah, Lisa Frankenstein, yep. Um, the, we heard in pub trivia. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's sort of just like some actual like literature and mythology lore that like it is very common for like common in stories that you know people like wake up in the future and sort of like exploring how different it is and that's yeah. just like a, i think it's like a, a really common uh human experience to want to know or want to think about yeah. what the future could be and sort of play around with that um so yeah that's kind of fun um but i do want to give my disclaimer for the science and philosophy of time travel that we were really talking about um right. again don't sue us the, yeah don't sue us but also there's no consensus on anything really related to time travel relativity uh quantum mechanics any of that i don't so, even know if quantum is a real word you know <laughs> quantum is a real word don't okay ask you didn't google it um but so we're not going to be using this to cinema sins anything it's no, really no, just no. for us who do like, we hate more than BuzzFeed? <laughs> <laughs> um we really just want to use it to like you know just like have a fun conversation especially about this movie where it's like there's not a ton of time travel like this movie does focus so much on like the experience of this guy and then them falling in love yeah but to kind of to then jump into like well what if if we're talking about like the concepts of time travel um 
So I have a couple things that I want to pop in here, which okay. I actually don't think we'll super talk about um, presentism versus eternalism very much. Wow. But I did want to bring these up. Um, yeah. so this movie does wrestle with the idea of whether or not the past and future are physical places that you can visit just like we talked about uh, last week with uh, Back to the Future. It turns out that the past is a physical place you can visit. Um, so presentism uh, says that past and future events only exist as changes that occur, that have occurred or will occur in the present. They don't exist as places you can go to. Like you can't actually go okay. back in time. You can't go forward. They, uh, okay. you know, it's wholly dependent, dependent on the present moment, like what happens. Um, eternalism, on the other hand, believes that the past and future are real places that you can go and visit in the physical sense, just like uh, we exist in the present moment. Um, just like you like go to a previous save file, sort of. Yeah, that's actually yeah. a really good way to put it. Yeah, you go back to your next save file, like you fucked up your game or like, yeah. you know. You, it's glitching out. You, you always go back to that save file. God goes back to the last save file and where it is. <laughs> um, but what's interesting about eternalism, you know, saying that like, okay, you can go back to the past, you go back to the future. This basically suggests that there's no objective flow of time. Time isn't just moving forward. Um, I put the um, AKA time as a social construct. Oh, because um, it's eternal, right? Like, so it's like, I mean, to use the God example, like the concept of that God is outside of time. Yes. And everything is just happening. Exactly. Simultaneously. And that if we could harness a way to tra travel through time, we could kind of be like God and just dip all over time wherever we wanted. Um, do, you, do you ever think about how like you can only ever be in the present and like you can only remember the past? Like you can never like, but the past is you can only remember it, right? But you know, at one time it was the present. I don't know. I know that I'm just describing like the basics. <laughs> Do you ever of have a, a dream where you <laughs> end in a dream? But I think about that all the time. How you can never re-experience the same thing. Yeah. Yes. Let me ask you guys this. Let's say someone like a family member or someone a really close friend told you like the same scenario that happened in the movie. Like, hey, Colin, I you gotta just stick with me here okay <laughs> i found this portal to travel in time and it has been proven to be successful mm. and they are dead serious and they're like please i need you to stick with me right. what would you say what would you think if you did that to me i would believe you it depends would on the I, person would i jump off a cliff no, if you're like, now I need to Would like... you jump off the Brooklyn Bridge into the yeah. East River? No. Yeah, oh, what... I would be like, here's some photos. Not AI. <laughs> not AI. <laughs> well, yeah, now in today's world, yeah. it's like not AI. See, I think it's the, the life-threatening jump that would worry yeah. me. I think yeah, that then I'd be cool. like, Alex, let's let's get, let's go to the hospital. Like, yeah. let's, mm -hmm. I'm nervous. But if you were like, I 100%, I'd be like, okay. Because, and not everyone, the person who said they were scared if the Virgin Mary appeared to them, they would think she was hot and then they like get a boner. Like if they said that, I'd be like, you know, I think what's happening, uh -huh. like that stuff. But if you like, if Alex came up to me and was like, mm -hmm. in Griffith it. Park, yeah, <laughs> in one of the caves, there is a portal. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, let's go. Yeah. How much time do I need to block off? I know, I know I'm a jokester. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, but if you were like a hundred percent, I mean, I would assume no. you were joking at first, but then yeah. I'd be like, if you were like, no, like I swear, I swear, I'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah. I I yeah. went back and forth on it last night. I was just like, imagine, because I was like, hey, come on, believe him, <laughs> you know, and it's like, like you were that's... thinking him, but yeah, yeah, that's what's interesting. So so basically, in the movie, Stuart does basically agree with eternalism that he he has always believed that there are physical places that he right. could go to and obviously you know he yeah. proves it um but it is interesting because like the reason she probably doesn't believe him is because they dated and he you know he wasn't faithful or you know he did something to her that she was like i don't trust you yeah and so it's like she wouldn't trust him on that so that is interesting like 
their personal dynamic right. completely affects that. Because otherwise, it, if this was just her downstairs neighbor, this would yeah. have been a completely different story. She'd be like, okay, maybe I would believe mm-hmm. him. Right. Um, but yeah. So I do, I will be touching on some of the uh, principles and paradoxes we talked about last week. Um, and for our listeners and also for our guest, I will be re-explaining them. Um, but again, we're not going to talk about them too much because again, this movie doesn't hella dive into the time travel, which is good. Hella. Speaking um, of time travel. <laughs> uh, so we talked about the, uh, the time machine as the way that they traveled through time. This week we'll be ta- talking about uh time portals which portals. i put in air quotes um because spoiler alert, those don't, aren't really a real thing they are really just kind of what? a fictional invention um, oh my gosh but you know what about ella's it. mother would say she believes in everything <laughs> um but it's basically like fiction's version of like the wormhole it's a very simplistic version of a yeah. wormhole um but the we also talked about the compossibility principle, um, which again I'm going to explain. So basically, this principle mm-hmm. says whatever happened in the past cannot change. So anything mm-hmm. that a time traveler experiences is limited to the events of the past as they unfold as they're meant to. Mm-hmm. Now, because he goes forward in the future, I don't know if this principle applies, you know, exactly the same way. Um, but it does kind of uh, come up a little bit with some things that are illogical in this movie. Um, there's also the self-consistency principle, which states that everything that has happened cannot be changed. So anything the time traveler does while traveling, they have done what they were supposed to do. That was already what was supposed was already- to happen. Yes. it's kind of like a predestination exactly vibe. yeah so it it does Ooh. sort of mess with free will predestination um yeah. that i'm a big free will stand so i love that for you yeah um but the last thing is another paradox which is actually for the very end of our movie discussion so stay tuned it's gonna be a fun discussion <laughs> This is oh god! This month it's it's coming for me. Oh, uh, I, yeah, I love this. <laughs> but okay. uh, yeah, that's sort of our front load, and uh, I have a couple small spots, but really, we're just gonna be talking about love. Love. See, that's my comfort zone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Aphrodite's work. Uh, so we're in New York. We're in the 1876. Colors haven't even been invented yet. Everything's right. brown, you know. <laughs> uh, and we get a speech about erections and time. I think I wrote time and Hannah wrote and erections because I did think they really keep using the word erection. And Liam Schreiber's character is like laughing. He's like, and looking around like, why is no one else laughing? It's like, what an idiot. This is, people didn't know what erections were. Right? That's what I'm wondering. I was like, They had to have used some term for a dick getting hard, but I imagine it was erection, but maybe they didn't find dick jokes that funny. Yeah. Uh, Phallic panic, you know. Uh, Is that a thing? No, I'm just... I was going to say, I don't think anyone was panicking about the phallus as it rules the world, so... Mm. Um, Okay. Happy women, happy post, but it's no longer women's history, man. So, Yeah. (laughs) So he doesn't gonna tell it like it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're we're trying to get on this alpha male and be a guest on an alpha male podcast. Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. Yeah. Uh so they're talking about like, oh, this is a testament to time and it's Hugh the Brooklyn Jack- Bridge, right? The Brooklyn Bridge. Hugh Jackman his hair is fluffed, his mind is blown. He's drawing, he's excited, he's like, I love inventions. I love exciting. I love Edison. I love Graham Bell. I love that part of Epcot. I, you know, like, (laughs) I love it. And so he's super excited. uh, And he sees someone acting kind of weird. Laughing at the dick joke. Yeah, he's like, okay. Also, everyone is checking him out constantly. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. I mean. So funny. It was just like. (laughs) Just like. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, tag yourself. Uh, (laughs) I'm Lady in Paris on number five. Uh, (laughs) So he, he has to go back to, you know, where he's staying with his uncle. Mm-hmm. Who's the? Did you saying Royal Highness? Okay, we talked about the royalty thing not making sense, and we're gonna we're leave it. We're gonna done. leave that in the past at the beginning of this podcast. Uh, yeah, but, and this is like when but in the self consistency, what has happened cannot be changed. No, uh, <laughs> I don't even know the terms well enough to make a joke. Uh, so they, they get uh, to the house. It's on a street. It's on Madison. Mm -hmm. i think right um but this is where we see the like his little uh pulley system he's like ah yes i'm trying to work out this machine to make to transport people up and down without having to use stairs they said priests up to the bell tower is how his uncle thought of it yeah but in the real world, this is a thing that's been invented. But anyway, yeah. Um, in this universe, it has not been invented. He's yet. he's quirky. He loves to think and do inventions. He loves to amuse himself, which I wish they had played out more. Uh, like he's kind of like ha ha, like where he's like, oh, we're useless. I need to marry for money. Who's wealthy? And he goes on this whole thing about royalty being antiques, which I'm like, I think that's that's more World War One energy that's like the next generation yeah but here's here's my thing with that speech but he's a forward thinker he's a forward thinker yeah uh so he the speech that almost gave me the ick for this movie oh because when they're i'm like you're just trying to make him like so palatable mm-hmm. and to me like you're the monarchical aspect of someone from 1800s would be probably one of the easier things to be to deal with there's a lot worse. Like, we're post-racism being invented. Like, you know, yeah. like... So I was just kind of like, if they make him too progressive, it'll be too annoying. And he's like, these are the new royals. And I'm like, they're people invented shit for centuries, man. Like, I, yeah. that speech was, like, very 2001. And mm-hmm. so that, like, was taking me out of it. Yeah. But I liked him more later but then i'm like why did we have this whole speech about royalty when that like government systems and the role of royalty never comes up in this movie again i think he the his uncle wants him to basically like serve his royal purpose which is basically just like making sure they have money and and, but he's like the real royals are the inventors like the people that are like making change and so i think that's just like his signal that like He's like, oh, I don't want to just be like a lousy duke. Like, I want to change the yeah. world. But your but lifestyle requires money. Other people be poor. On top of that, we never talk about the elevators with him ever. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's just told it to us by Stuart. He's like, he's the guy who invented the elevator. And it's just like, oh, that's why they're not working. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> what did you do with my ancestors' money, Leopold? What did you throw it away? Yeah. We were starving. And also, they could have had some fun, not to add more to this movie, but like they could have had fun with like time travel paradoxes where like he can't know that he was the inventor of the elevator. So they have to like keep it from him, you know, like. Because otherwise, would he? It's sort of like a uh, doc in uh, Back to the Future. Like, did he pursue the flux capacitor because Marty told him, or because he was interested in the invention? Like, that kind of gets blurred. So they could have had fun with that, but they don't. He so was born he's, during the he's... famine in Ireland. Oh, so it wasn't him; it's his parents. Yeah. Mm. Well, still. His parents squander that money. And yeah. he's like, well, I guess he doesn't care about being poor, but also like he's never ex- actually experienced poverty. So Yeah, that's the thing is people be broke mm-hmm. in this so time. Broke. People be broke and he's yeah. Like broke, broke. Yeah. So that's whenever it's like, especially he's a man and he's complaining about the marriage for money thing. 
At first, you used to complain, you know, something like Jasmine, you live in a palace. And now, as an adult, I'm kind of like, you're a 15 year old girl. I get you don't want to marry a stranger. But I'm Leopold, you're a 30 year old man. Get a job or get a wife. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> like... Sorry, but he does charm me. It's just this intro was like, I think it was supposed to make me like him. And I was like, you're trying too hard and I don't. What's interesting is I don't like him in this. I don't like him until he gets to the future when you can start to see his charm. I don't think yeah. he's like all that charming. I think you need, because the what's interesting is the contrast. And if he's already a forward right. thinker, then I was like, oh, this will be boring. But right. then there is contrast. And that's fun. Yeah. Uh, and he's so yeah because he's there he's dunking on Christian Shaw and because she's like charmed by him or whatever and he has to dance with her because she's like wealthy and I'm like this woman yeah will uh never own her own body in her life mm-hmm. no. I saw that, I saw that actress at a Ikea <laughs> like a year ago oh my god <laughs> I love her she's so funny cute um I what I was gonna say is like I feel like if this film was to be redone present day I just think there would be so many changes even with the dynamic of um Leopold yeah to your point like I feel like there's even a little bit of that early 2000s kind of I don't know rub on I I don't know how to put it but like I just I just think there's a sprinkle of a certain attitude that he has that I just don't think would necessarily pass in this day and age. I can just sense it a little bit, a more early 2000s theme. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. kind of like all these women are unworthy of him and he knows it kind of thing. And Meg Ryan's worthy of him because she's not charmed. Yeah, yeah. I I just don't really see that in more recent films so I think that's an interesting little thing that makes it an early 2000 movies yeah Yeah, that's a good point yeah um so he's dancing and he sees the weirdo in his house he's like what and then he's like excuse me and then is following him and running around and he's chasing him in the rain and I was like people are gonna think he's gay um yeah and he's chasing him and then he Chases him up the Brooklyn Bridge in a very this Which is a is long sequence. Built, yeah. It's like hasn't even fully been constructed yet. He's like dropping barrels on him. It's giving Mario and Donkey yeah. Kong. <laughs> uh, and he he sees this person trying to jump off the bridge, and he's like, "I'm gonna save you." Yeah, this is his save the cat moment. Save, save the, the ex-boyfriend moment. Yeah, you're like, okay, he's a good guy. And then they both fall into the portal. Uh, I did hate that. I think I also hated the portal thing at first. I was like, they just fall. Uh-huh. Um, but they don't ever show them when they come out. No. It's, I think it's a limited CGI thing. I think it's, they just want... You to believe in the magic of time travel. Yeah, no, I just wanted a goofy little silly goofy shot where they're all it wet would. afterwards. I don't know. I think True. a little more timeless. I think you can totally tell the CGI from every year and just yeah. how it looks and doesn't. And um because if they show up in the present, the present. Yeah. that's a relative term uh if they show up in the present like wet but like where do they get spit out yeah that's like, the thing is i don't need out. like a cgi effect i just be like where do they come out on the other side they're just like somewhere in the middle of central park they, they emerge from or, a pond yeah. or something yeah that would be fun yeah. the door or something yeah yeah and they emerge from a that's pond a they get to point. see Hugh Jackman wet yeah oh yeah. okay so, so ulterior motive ulterior motive. you're not but, trying to fix the movie you just want to see him soaking wet but the, okay but like on the movie sense it did always be like yeah. so wait are they just like do they appear falling from a bridge because you could die right. i don't know you get, yeah it, that's a good question you touch the water in new out? york you'll never be the same <laughs> you'll get where do you get spit out and if they're not wet, that's interesting. Because that yeah. means they didn't hit the water. Yeah. That would be interesting. 
They so, hit the lights, let the music move you. For sure. yourself tonight, as Selena Gomez says. Uh, yeah. So he's in modern day New York, all sprawled out on the couch in his very Richard Madden esque outfit. Um, <laughs> From Cinderella. Since Cinderella. Yeah. I was like, little... I was like, Richard Madden just doesn't just walk around in his Cinderella I mean, he, costume. He could get away with it if he wanted to. But, uh, <laughs> and so he's like, yeah, he's like all laid out. And I'm like, no wonder. Meg Ryan implies it's something gay, but we'll get to the when she I wrote Meg Ryan does a transphobia. <laughs> um so she, he's there, you know, with Stuart and his barking dog, and uh Meg Ryan sees in it him and it's like, Stuart, I need my palm pilot. Okay. Give me my palm pilot. And she's like making noises. I would like to first start by saying we don't know their relationship until like six minutes into this shenanigans. Yeah, I was trying to be like, does she just hate him? And so she's like making noises to like wake up his dog and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's just like a creepy neighbor because otherwise I'm like, why is she harassing this man? Because he's like, she's not a happy person. Yeah, and I'm like, I have to agree. Yeah, it's because of that haircut. (laughs) I'd be miserable too. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, she yeah, she just always looks like she's about to host trading spaces. Uh, I no, just, <laughs> if that haircut wasn't in the film, like there's a couple, like some of the sunglasses looked really early two thousands. But if they didn't have some of those sunglasses, I really think this would have been you don't know what time. Yeah, the so the hair that. really does like date it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So he, yeah, so he, so the steward is like, I got a guy from the past. And she's like, why are you always lying? Oh my God. <laughs> and he's like, uh, okay, he's a guy from the computer software conference. And she's like, I don't care if he's a transvestite. He's picked up in Times Square or whatever. And it's like, okay. 2001, you know. Megara. <laughs> Where are we going with this? Yeah. Uh, and so she like is like trying to walk into his apartment asking for the Palm Pilot and uh, Hannah has some notes about the time travel stuff so yeah he literally tells her because like she's still in her apartment and he calls her and he's yeah. like okay I did it I made my big discovery I found a naturally occurring time portal in the East River it only mm-hmm. shows up like uh every couple weeks or something yeah uh, but it's gonna be there on on monday again so a week from then mm-hmm. um astrology yeah astrology um mm-hmm. so based on my l- very limited research time portals again not like real things in like the science aspect wow. they are fictional devices used to transport Bias. people back in time so again i think it's just like the simplistic version of a wormhole I mean, Lego um, Island 2 had a time portal. So, I mean, that's enough evidence for me. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, <laughs> physicists have determined that there are such things as traversable wormholes that oh. would allow travel in both directions from one Like a shoots and ladders. Uh, no. Yeah, I guess Because it's so. both directions, I guess. Yeah, both directions. Okay. Um, I mean, you can go both directions on the ladders, can't you, in shoots and ladders? I, I guess, but why would you want to go down? It's been a long time since I've yeah. been like hide if well, there's but, something going on. I don't know. But if you wait, isn't it? It's been a long time since I played shoots and ladders. I was gonna say, like, if you make someone have to go back, do and they land on the ladder, do they have to like go back down? No, then they go up. That would be the shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh just our little board game talk. Um, so yeah, there are okay. there potentially are transverse trans versible wormholes um so we already talked about that in back to the future um this is actually demonstrated back in like the 70s when like they really first Ooh. started like yes we have mathed it out we can say for sure um homer ellis and k.a bronikov those are our people now um, yeah what if there's our traversable wormholes but they're like glory holes hmm that could well, be an interesting sci-fi short story. I mean, you can make any transversible wormhole a glory hole, I guess. 
if you put your mind to it. I think if we told people that, we'd get the science locked down faster. You know what? You <laughs> you are so fucking right. You are so right. Saying. That bachelor's that degree mindset. <laughs> uh, so in the movie, Stuart does actually say that you have to jump from the top of the bridge in order to gain enough momentum to go through the time portal, which oh. sort of aligns with, you know, the, the idea that you, yeah, you have to go a certain speed to uh, trigger the flux capacitor or you have to hit a certain speed to be able to go through the wormhole. But what we learned last week is that you have to travel at the speed of light or faster, actually faster than the speed of light, mm-hmm. because otherwise you're not going to go anywhere, right? That signal yeah. is going to be received well, after you. Wings. Not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> but, Never had one in my life, except but, I've had it, except mixed with alcohol. Ooh, ooh, gross. No. Mm-mm. Okay, but maybe it's. No, but he doesn't travel because of love. Who, Stuart? Yeah, no. Oh God! Because I was like, no, oh, he, maybe Meg Ryan. It's like the nerd. love. Love is faster than light, yeah. you know. Well, he's just doing it because obviously he's like a Time big travel. science nerd. Yeah. Um, big but so what York. he's he's basically like I think Leo says it later that like, oh yeah, like he basically figured it out. It's it's traveling at the speed of gravity, which will be enough to time travel, which is not true but they this movie actually weirdly does hold some science of like hey you have to go a certain speed to get through a wormhole um that's but if the stars are right maybe that's it because the stars i do think it's an astrology thing because it's based on the days of the week which come from the same place as astrology sure yes yes babylon baby the lady gaga song but what's really interesting about the time portal in this movie is that it only connects to a very specific date and time. Yeah. April whatever, 1870 something, right? Mm-hmm. And so my question to the group is, yeah. in Stuart's present day, is time still moving forward? Or when he gets spit out, oh. does he have to repeat that day because it's also connected to that specific day and time? Oh, I like that better. Because I was like, sense. I was like, oh, that's really weird. Present time is still passing. I was like, no, because Stuart mm-hmm. says later to Leo, he's like, hey, you're going to probably repeat some things. And it's like, well, how would Stuart know that? Maybe he had to repeat stuff. That's why maybe he knew about Meg Ryan in the palm pilot he knew when to like shut the um, door and keep her out because she this, was harassing him yeah, already this reminds me of another meg ryan movie this quote if we're gonna explain why in the, seattle no uh if we're explaining why the time portal works and where you have these questions it's mm. gonna be when uh and when harry met sally when right. he asks her why there were a pair of underwear that were labeled sunday and she says because of god uh-huh i should and think you know of what? that that phrase like the way she says the line all the time but i have to because like i don't want people to think like people like why is this happening i don't want to be like because of god but like as a reference to meg ryan helen's catholicism yeah and i'm like no no this is a meg ryan (laughs) reference yeah it's a mother reference it's a reference to mother meg ryan yeah birth america birth the rom-com with her emails (laughs) with her emails gross but yeah no, um, you've got mail baby but yeah so that's a that's some fun science there that they're playing with wow um so talk he, about trauma so he leaves leopold who's like where am i what's going on am i in prison and he's like no, i gotta walk my dog i gotta walk my dog you're like you're fine just stay here like you time traveled and leopold's like am i dead Oh, uh, I forgot to say, Stuart maced him as they were hanging on to the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. I kind of chipped them. I don't know. Um, uh, and he... I thought that too, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, something about it. And her brother. He just has chemistry with everyone. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and so he... Stuart then is like distracted by a hottie taken out the trash and then the, all the elevators are breaking because he invented the elevator so it's messing with time I guess 
So yeah, he... it's like they took him out of his timeline. So he's not there to do the thing he's supposed to do. So the very basic pulley system mm-hmm. that he invented, because he did not invent the computer components, because those still work. Yeah. He can still open that door and fall down that fucking shaft. Yeah. But it's it's literally just like they took him out of times because he isn't there for however many days the elevators just don't work the elevators all over modern day new york city nobody's going to work on the 80th floor that's insane whoa oh my gosh how did these people get to work i thought they were just like spotty they weren't like all broken yeah i think it's more like uh because there's also a scene where she's walking up the stairs with like a bunch of other people so yeah Mm. maybe it's like like they work but also they don't work but like yeah, a printer. Anyway. <laughs> like every printer ever. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it affects all the elevators. There's uh, like a couple of throwaway lines. Like I think toward the end, once Leo goes back to his timeline, JJ, creepy JJ says mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm glad they got the elevators fixed. I was thinking about having my office on the, the, uh, the bottom floor, the ground floor. Okay. Yeah. So there's like, it's like, uh, barely talked about yeah which is so weird like why even have this right. why make things harder with the elevators that's so stupid anyway i love this movie so uh as hannah says the movie suggests that leo is the only person in the universe who is smart enough to invent a police system yeah fuck that alicia otis guy yeah uh so Meg Ryan is like, you're the dog peed. You gotta take him on a walk. Kate, oh, I she say. says he makes Lake Erie. And I was like, yeah. thank you. I, I feel seen <laughs> that someone not only uh like talked about Lake Erie, but also described it in its essence. Disgusting. <laughs> He's like, you can't just leave a dog in the hallway. And he is like, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, and- she just busts into this apartment. Yeah, the boundaries. Everyone be climbing oh. up each other's apartments. No one's locking their windows. I mean... He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up. <laughs> oh, that takes me back. Yeah. Back Speaking in of time. time travel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there, she, he's out. He's confused by the world. Uh, he gets a ticket from Oscar winner Viola Davis for letting the dog poop. And he's like, you got to pick that up. And he's like... A gentleman does not pick up feces. And she's like, okay. All right. I'm going to write you a ticket. And this is where he, this is my full name. And then she just takes the mail that has yeah. Stuart's name on it. So Stuart gets the ticket, which he's the one who deserves it, I guess. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, yeah. how did he fell down the elevator and they're like, we don't know where he is. And then later he gets taken to the hospital. Yeah. I think like the doorman found yeah. him. Because he, like, just falls down, and I was like, and then there's, like, whimsical shenanigans, and I'm like, right? he fucking dead? Is like, he that Miss died. Tisha level dead? Yeah, it was bad. Definitely. Uh, yeah, well, so I he... This movie cares as much about Stuart as it really does about the logic of the time travel, because, like, this man disappears. Yeah. It's He's crazy. locked away in an institution, and nobody notices. And that's what I don't understand is why he gets put in an institution because he was talking about time travel or do they think he jumped down the elevator shaft? Like They're saying he jumped down the elevator shaft. Yeah, and then that's he's wild. talking about time travel as well. So it's just... You think he'd be smart enough not to tell No, that strangers. man does not strike me as smart. True, 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 true. Great smarts. Uh, so yeah, he, Leopold is like TV big building like cars the yellow ones don't stop you know they honk and he goes excuse me (laughs) love it and uh yeah meg ryan is as santa wrote meg ryan does business she's a business bitch she wears gray she goes to her fancy office Natasha Leone is her assistant who reads romance books, but also is on top of her shit. She has the coffee ready. She's like ready to go. Mm-hmm. And she talks about her boss, JJ. So that's Meg Ryan's boss, Kate's boss. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, he's all like, she's like, JJ's here? What did JJ say? And JJ's like, oh, we'll see you in the meeting. Um, yeah. He has... He's played by Bradley Whitford, who is effortlessly creepy. Uh, and I don't mean that as an insult to Bradley Whitford. He's just good at playing creeps. Right. Yeah. Uh, so she meanwhile yeah Stuart trapped in a hospital uh so they're at Leopold is at the house uh-huh it's at Stuart's apartment he's confused because there's this child there because he calls random child Stuart calls him and is like don't leave the house or whatever and then this random child is there he's like oh I just come in and watch tv because my mom works late which is like wonderful that Stuart does that so nice yeah. um this kid we never see him again after this yeah, I thought he was going to be the like the the goofy kid sidekick. I have a wild theory. He was cut and they just had the scene already. That, <laughs> but I think this is a scene this is a um a plot device to make us know that he's cool in like a race sense, you know? Cuz this is a little he's a black kid and you know, he it's not going to be seeing a lot of black people back in his day, at least not, not in the no. best of settings. And uh, I think that's what this is. And that sucks. If that, that's Well, especially person. because he could have disliked imperialism and slavery when he complained about monarchy being useless. Yes. Did, his whole thing is, oh, we're useless. I love invention. He should have been like, our things are so backward here, you know, because he makes a comment about, oh, women in pants, like, that means you work. And I'm like, oh, yeah, nobody wore pants. Like, what? no, what are you talking about? You know, what? I know we're like not focusing on this right now, but the fashion too, like Kate throughout this film, she's wearing clothes that could, is so inspired by the yeah, it looked a little almost like Renaissance, her outfits in a way. Um, Especially the last dress. Definitely the last dress, but the collar and th- some of her outfits to the office where it's just easily, you they would look not so, such a great contrast between them. Um, co- yeah. You know, compared to like, look at what um, Natasha, Natasha's, what her name was Darcy. Darcy. In the- Mm-hmm. like if you look at her outfit compared to meg meg ryan's in the yeah film. she has like patterns and stuff that yeah would like if you look at your personality i knew like if you go like you can kind of see like these the coats and everything just how they were tailored um yeah yeah, yeah. Make a little, look a little more cohesive with leopold versus like a early 2000s outfit like a jean jacket or something yeah i i think it's also like I think it's to take away her quote unquote femininity. Like it makes her look more masculine in a sense. And I think that like, I don't know. I feel like that's supposed to be their way of being like, yeah, she's a modern woman. She's not like super feminine. She's not into romance. Like like, she talks to Darcy about the book. She goes, did they live happily ever after? Like she's being sarcastic about it. So it's like, I think it's, also one of those things where it's like oh they're just trying to make her seem like a modern woman yeah. there is it's funny because the, I, the thing about this movie is i think it's too scared to ultimately say anything and yeah. so because there's like a hint even with her boss that like he's when he's basically like you're basically not a woman you're just like a man and that like she's like being like yeah but like she doesn't love hearing that and i'm like right this like that would like there's actually something interesting kind of going on there but they don't like commit to it because they don't want to say anything i guess about like how she feels about gender roles um because like she's gonna be dealing with those you know but like how she like does she identify with women does she identify more with men you know like you know what is her relationship to this stuff yeah um that would be more, I was thinking more so like, yeah, Victorian era clothes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like more Renaissance kind of, but. Yeah, Victorian, because yeah. he's Victorian, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. He's named after her son. He's sort of the son. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
yeah her the blouse that she gets after she um spills coffee it definitely does have like a high collar so yeah i see that yeah yeah, yeah. there's a couple outfits i'm like okay this is a choice <laughs> and it just doesn't yeah it was interesting choice that keeps choosing um and so yeah also the brother shows up from acting charlie. camp charlie and he it's sees not acting camp he sees what, he, what do you think he would have preferred they have said like because they said it was workshop. like a retreat yeah um yeah so it was like a workshop but the, he also kind of like suggests he's like yeah i had to leave early because there was this person that kept sticking their fingers and then he's cut off and i'm like i'm sorry would you like <laughs> to complete that sentence sir Jeez. so that was wild but anyway so he is explaining, Leopold is explaining to this child, um, Pirates of Penzance. Yes. Uh, and do love Pirates of Penzance. And he is doing a little like performance. And then Charlie is like, oh, they're playing that? He's like, yeah. And he like plays the piano and they're all singing Modern Major General. And she comes home and is like, what? Because she had a day where her boss is like, you're basically not a woman. You know what it's like to be a woman, but like you can connect with them, but you think like a man, you know, yeah. because she was like, knew, was like these butter ads, they're not buttering my muffin, you know, no. like they're not doing a good job. And so he's like, you're like a asexual blob. And I'm into <laughs> that. You're, or you're a man, but it's 2001 and I can't be gay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just truly horrible, horrible. And he's like, oh, yeah, I definitely want to have a potion with you. Will you go to dinner with me? And we'll talk about it. We'll talk That's sort of the it. insinuation. Yeah. Uh, I've done my sexual harassment training. Yep. Same. I had to do it again this year. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, Those are signs. Bad signs. Bad signs. Quid pro uh, quo, potentially. Mm -hmm. Don't like it. So she goes home, comes home and she's like, Charlie, you invited my ex-boyfriend's weird freak friend over to dinner. He's like, yeah, he was cool. Uh, and they have a dinner where he's like eating his tater tot with refinement that so was a funny memory of mine as <laughs> soon as i saw that i was like uh -huh. i why do i remember this so graphically because the way they he have... like cuts it so yeah yeah they have some funny moments of him like being his past self in the future and so it's like really weird but also like him exploring the future mm -hmm. um but those shenanigans like he doesn't ever like really adjust and i mean i guess that's still more realistic but yeah if we're talking about like um the night before christmas right like that man can drive a subaru yeah. in 26 seconds he can work uh, on alexa he can yeah binge watch yeah yeah so it's sort of like he can okay, work a shower that, Yes, immediately. And, because and wrap the towel around his he, waist. Yeah, because Hugh Jackman, is, Leopold, is just like running the sink and splashing it in his face. Yes, he's doing basically what he would do with like a pitcher of water yeah. in a bowl. So it's but like, like their technology is closer, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because he's like but, would know how to shave. Yeah. But like he, those shenanigans continue to happen throughout the movie. And at a certain point, I'm like, it's not funny anymore you know uh so yeah they're having the dinner and he's like okay and he's like what's the next course Love and that. she's like there is no other course and then he's like where i come from food is a thing of delicacy and taste and you can't just live life without taste you know it's a thing of passion and then she's like, I can't deal with this, which, okay, I think the appropriate response would be like, excuse me, sir, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, I'm ready like, for dinner, don't insult my food. But then, exactly. but her thing is like, she kind of does this like tantrum. Yep. Of, like, she acts I, like a child. 
yeah, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this. And then so Charlie's like, she's and drunk. Then, he says yeah. she's drunk. I was like, she's had one glass of wine, maybe. And there's a whole thing about him getting up whenever there's a lady that enters. I yeah. think is is she being like weirded out because she's like he's being romantic and she like is like doesn't know what to do about it. Right? I thought it was just weird out because he's being he's weird, but yeah. but, but okay. also like she, she's like I'm not good at romance, like she's yeah. not good at those things. So she's sort of like she's bad at what love. What is he like, doing? Ozzy. Yeah, I think she does literally say that though. Yeah, yeah. My parents briefly had a thing where they wanted us to do that, like stand whatever a woman stands. But oh. yeah, I'm glad that they didn't force you to continue doing that. A lot, yeah. Yeah, it's like a. It's like it's one of those things where like the society was structured that way, mm-hmm. but to like shoehorn it into, yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. So the fancy dinner doesn't go well. You know, she's annoyed with him. He takes his leave. Uh, the next day he doesn't know how to make toast. He's burning it. Yeah, everything's a mess. There's smoke everywhere um and she's dealing with him like come on come on and she's like every he's like the toast why do you have to put it in this many times but this blah 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 and she's like we just all push the toast back in and i was like he's a annoying in a fun way she's annoying in a not fun way yeah I don't like her she's she's not likable and again she doesn't have to be likable but if she is the romantic interest for and we'll have to talk about who the fuck the protagonist is but for leopold like we have to be charmed by her at some point because otherwise it's like why would we root for them yeah i think it's they i think they're like she's meg ryan yes yep so you love meg ryan yep and i'm like they're trying to trick us yeah don't gaslight me Yeah. yeah Uh, so she, this is where he says something about butter, right? And she's like, yeah. "Say that again." And, and then so she, she takes advantage of him. Yeah, she takes this 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 man who does not know the world he's in, and takes him to this like read through. They're trying to find the perfect person for their commercial, and he doesn't really know what's going on. They're like, "Hey, you know, you're wasting time." Like. What is this guy? He looks like the the Quaker Oats guy, and I'm like, don't insult the Quakers like that. But then, uh, <laughs> he like the opposite of imperialist, the Quakers, um, and then so he like does the the read through where he's like, butter, you know. Um, this was one of my core memories. And this I is don't the, know why. This was the only part where I was like, oh, that's this movie where he's like fresh creamy butter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what was I gonna um sorry? Oh, what I was gonna say is it's interesting. Um, I felt like okay, if you put anyone in front of a camera, especially if it, you're not from that era, you know, like they're probably not gonna do well. Uh right. they're and so I thought to myself, like, obviously it's a movie, so there's you know, whatever they can play with the reality but it you know he did such an amazing job and I was thinking like is it because of his title back home and probably speaking in front of people or whatever it is that he's so successful yeah. I don't know I just thought it was like interesting I'm like wow he killed it first try <laughs> yeah. but that's a good point he can't he gets upset that you have to push the toast down twice in the toaster but he's like Ah uh, yes, I I I'm supposed to do a direct to camera read. He doesn't say to camera, but this is a direct read, you know. And he makes a reference. To, I remember what, what the the stage play was. Uh, but like, he like understands not just theater, but like film. Like yeah. he can pick up on that so quickly, but he doesn't get the toaster. It's like, I mean, again, I'm not trying to cinema sense yeah. it, but it's just like if right. you're gonna have fun with what he does and doesn't understand. Mm-hmm. like that, this is i don't know that's a thing that all these kind of movies have to like you kind of have to pick your battles yeah on what they're gonna be because the thing is the reality would be like it'd be very boring just to watch someone be like ah, ah yeah you know yeah um we're like okay 
yeah, <laughs> he's he's forward thinking. He's like, all right, he rolls with the punches. Uh, so he unless, yeah, unless he, it comes to toast, toast, yeah, and he he uh, takes food seriously. Uh, yeah, uh, and I so he's it. talking about creamy butter, and she's like, this guy says that like if you have this butter, your hips will go grow just small enough that he'll maybe come to your house and sweep you off your feet. Yeah, it's uh gives you the fresh buttery taste without adding to the luxury of your waistline, and I was like, ah, the two thousands. Telling us to eat diet butter so we don't get fat. Yeah. Next thing you know, he's gonna be like, only eat yogurt and special K <laughs> to sugar infused <laughs> breakfast foods. Um so he they're like, he's amazing. He's perfect. They're like, Kate, you're awesome. And so they're going for a walk and she's outside and she's like, yes, yes, and doing all these wiggly things. He, I'm like, how does he sign the paperwork? No direct the, deposit. No social security No social number. security she's number. literally taking advantage of him. Uh, and so she's waddling around outside. I was like, there are times where I'm like, I. it's one of those things where you know someone's a good actor and you're like, this is weird because whoever was directing this didn't like edit it or rein it in. They just said, go wiggly. And so my like, Ryan's like, all right, wiggle, wiggle, I'll wiggle. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, and sexy and i know it you know <laughs> and yeah and so there he's like oh why don't we go for a carriage ride and she's like no i'm trying to get a cab and then someone steals her purse yeah, she's like those are for tourists tourists and this is what makes me think of night before christmas this is when i was like same movie where the guy runs off with her purse and she's going after him and then he gets on his horse or you know he gets it grabs a horse and from the carriage rider and scoops her up and gallops across. This is where I felt like I was being seduced by Hugh Jackman as he like rides across <laughs> that horse. Well, and, she like, was feeling seduced yeah. too. And he's like, give me back your purse or her, the lady's purse villain. Uh, and everyone's like, yes, you know, on the bridge. Uh, she was on the horse. Like it's for me, I'm like, let's go. Like I'm so competitive. I'm like, let's go, let's get that purse. And when she's like, what are we doing? <laughs> that, we that's doing? a sign of a rich person right there. Or getting that purse back. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I, I have belonging. 80 of those at home. No, truly. I'm like, what if she's I She's like, have- cell phone, whatever. You know, because they have cell phones. So she's like, that's why I have a cell phone. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that like, what? And she you- pulls out a brick. <laughs> uh, speaking of phones, at one point, uh, Stuart almost kills somebody trying to get a phone oh my god that is so crazy <laughs> why is that in this movie <laughs> Stuart was a weird character to me he felt like a yeah. self-insert and he was giving oc vibes i mean they're all ocs it's a script but <laughs> <laughs> i guess you could argue yeah. it's fan fiction about a real person who died of hemophilia at 30 but yeah this would have been his life had he lived <laughs> Had he lived, um, and had that other guy not invented the elevator, yeah, exactly. This really is such a pre Google movie. Um, <laughs> so she's uh, like the character guy is like, Oh, your boyfriend's uh, like a great horseback rider. She's like, He is, yeah, I know. Um, and so she's going to di- her business dinner date, but meanwhile, he goes. For a night on the town with Charlie. Charlie. And he's like, that's Patrice. She's going to be mine. Charlie's really into this woman. And Leopold is instantly way more charming than him. And Charlie's being really annoying and self-centered. And Leopold is like, oh, you know, all the best things are in the basement. And Just they're like, the Louvre. The Louvre. They're like, tell us more. I love our history. And... <laughs> Charlie's all like, Ugh, you like, I had it. And then you were being all like smooth and charming. And she thinks you're cute or gay, you know, whatever. And he's like, um, well, I got her number, bitch. Yeah. And he's like, oh, come on. And he's like, well, I got it because I asked if you, if like I said you were interested. Oh, yeah. True wingman. And he's like, no one wants to date a Jolly Andrew. Uh, I don't like, is this like a Prince Andrew reference? <laughs> Uh, but she's like, he's like, you know, like you're all goofy all the time. 
Like no one wants that. They want sincerity. Right. Uh, a person who entertains others by means of comic antics, a clown, a Mary mm-hmm. Andrew. <laughs> Google says this word is archaic. <laughs> archaic. You have no idea, Google. Yeah. Uh, it runs to kind of the Scarlet Pimpernel, like the floppy husband, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then he's like giving Charlie advice, old timey dating advice, but this I guess. Is- very enchanted is what it reminds me of yes. where she's like oh you need to do this this really someone probably saw this movie and was like we could do that uh-huh. we'd make that and then elf they're like we gotta make it you know <laughs> uh and so yeah meanwhile she is being sexually harassed um she's on a dinner date with her boss uh-huh. and he's not talking about the promotion he's uh-uh. talking about we gotta see la bohème let's go to the opera Mm-hmm. You know, this is my country house in England. You have to come visit. Yeah. And he uh, like dangles the promotion in her face. And then like she's like, yeah, so what's going on with that? Uh but yeah, so this um, is in a way, this scene is what made me like really root for her. Yes. Because you realize, like, before, it's he is, in a way, almost charming when she, like, spills on herself and he, like, orders her a new blouse. It's like he's obviously trying to impress her, but at that point, I'm like, oh, maybe she also likes him, which still, right. he's her boss. But then in this, it's like, she obviously is here for work, and he yes. is taking advantage of that, and mm-hmm. I don't know. She thought it was probably, like, more of, like, a courtesy dinner, like, a, I want to, like, treat you to a dinner and we'll talk about it yeah kind of thing. i think that's what she wanted um <laughs> he's trying to feed the- her cake and she's like mm, no thank mm, you no no thanks we're not gonna do that um yeah he's and but her wanting this promotion and her like going through the motions with him and like having to mm-hmm. like deflect him and like all of this amounts spoiler alert, to nothing because she apparently like is like i'm so tired of my job yeah i just want more 1876 is sort of what she says <laughs> later and i'm just like girl why are you going through all of this if you hate it like i guess she's literally just like she's stuck in this loop of like i have to do this because this is sort of like what path i'm on she's a rom-com heroine she yeah. works too hard and she needs to learn to live in love you yes. know and it's so annoying that like she goes through literal sexual harassment and then is also then like like she, oh god it's just but at the same this time this movie was written by men yes so it was very like, obviously yeah. written by men at the same time though as much as at that point where i like, don't give up the promotion then i'm like you know what you would have had to work with this sleaze ball even more yeah so definitely. like yeah for the and best also, for the best like, for the best I mean, she literally in that moment was like when she gets the promotion, she's like, you guys are ruining this because like I all I want to do was like to get a rest. And like now I finally got it because I have this promotion. I'm like, girl, your job is just about to get more stressful, less restful. Like, what are you talking yeah. about? Um, yeah. You're going to be too have... stressed to be blessed. Exactly. Um, I do have a note here about the Harvey Weinstein vibes that JJ gives. And the irony is that Harvey Weinstein produced this movie. This is a Miramax film. Oh, wow. So I don't know. Do the people who wrote this were like, hey, we know some guy who's like this a little bit. Way worse, but we'll use him as inspiration. He's um, like, this JJ guy, he's relatable. He's the, he's the main guy, right? Oh, my God. I could totally see that happening. They're like, yeah. And so because then Charlie is like, is talking to Leopold. He's like, you like my sister, don't you? So yeah. let's go hit on her. He's weird. Charlie's weird. Charlie's weird, but entertaining. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. Breck and Meyer. And so he takes him like into there in the restaurant and they're like sitting with them. And Leopold is, again, this is one of his top sexy moments where he's like, 
I hate sexual harassment. He's like, an employer who tries to date a woman in his employ is a serpentine cat. You know, like, Mm -hmm. you're an idiot. You're an ope. You're a sleazy. And he is. It's, like, correct. True then, true now. And he's like, then, then he goes like, you're trying to make a whore out of a lady. And you're like, okay, well, this is one of the things that would happen when you date someone from 1876, you know? Yep, one of those those things you just kind of have to accept, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Uh, And he is like, well, he's like, how do you, and he's like, I love uh, La Boheme and I speak French and this is my house. And he's like, well, your house actually isn't, there's no house there that wouldn't be from that time period, you know? Uh-huh. And then he's, he's like, like, he tells her, he's like, cause I fucking grew up there. Yeah. And he's also like, he speaks in French. This is again, Cinderella where it's like speaks in French. And then he's like, uh, uh, which I mean, to be fair, four semesters, I can't speak anything. And then uh, he's like, he can't even speak French or he speaks worse French than me, which is saying something. Uh, and then he's yeah. like, La Boheme isn't, takes place in France there's no character named Andre uh uh, and it uh is typically performed in Italian yes yeah iconic I'm like did this guy just like rent that's what I'm thinking because I'm like because there's a Mimi in rent yes and so I was like when did rent the musical come out uh in the 90s I think right about the musical late 90s it's a, okay it's a, it's. it came out yeah 1993 was the workshop so uh oh, yeah. Three, and then premiered january 1996 so he reads him to filth yeah and he's mad and then she's like you like are ruining this promotion for me uh and he makes a quill and ink to hand write an old timey letter to her to apologize for his behavior love that and when darcy sees it she's like so you're saying yes so that is a thing we'll be doing and she's like i don't know she's like "Mm, you're we're gonna fax it to him and i'm like i love a period piece literally a double period piece i mean i used to fax things for my mom yeah oh she didn't even ask her she was just like she went for it right (laughs) yeah Yeah. she's like "Mm, i said yes yeah darcy darcy is here for i was gonna make ryan what's her name kate Kate. kate's uh personal life and professional life yeah honestly darcy darcy needs a raise darcy yeah Darcy, uh, she's my her. favorite character in this movie. I mean, I I don't know. I do love Hugh Jackman, Leopold, but sometimes he can be a bit of a prick. Um, yeah, but I mean, again, he's he's from the eighteen eighteen seventy six. Yeah, but is that really an excuse? <laughs> I mean, like it be, is and it isn't. Yeah, it's like to know. be fair, there's certain things that like everyone from that time would be. And yeah. so it's like historical figure, like almost any historical figure is probably you could be like, oh, they're they were homophobic. And you're like, you're gonna be like, well, to what extent? Were they like we need to kill the gays yeah. or were they just like not involved? Yeah. You know, with that. You know, like there's just it, there's time periods, you know. And then there's people yeah. that people try and be like, it was a different time, and we're like Christopher Columbus was hard considered Horrible. awful yeah uh-huh. in his time period in the the lady yep. who did the inquisition was like crazy so like yeah, you so do funny. too many murders. after this movie um i saw it yesterday i saw the prestige right after it because my boyfriend really wanted to watch prestige which uh-huh. is based in um i looked it up it was 1890s and it has Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. And- yeah. yeah, and those movies aren't that far apart like when they came out. Yeah. Like, he just like mid 2000s, right? Something yes, like that. Yes. Exactly. Oh, actually, let me Good see. Movie. The movie was made in 2006. Yeah. I um, mean, so about he, 5 years later, yeah. He does have the face. He does have a face that hasn't seen an iPhone. You know, like that kind he of does. That's so that's it's that's the perfect way to put it. 
Yeah. I felt like Stuart definitely, in my opinion, fell out of place when he mm. yeah just his facial structure. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good point. Like, yeah, he could have literally been wearing the whole ass get up and blending it as best as possible. I'm like, that guy's a time traveler. Yeah. 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 I felt it a little bit for that actress. Um that he was supposed to marry. Oh, Christian. Felt- yeah. Miss Tree was her yeah. name. Miss um, Connectedy. Yeah, I felt a little bit with her. She didn't look from that era, but we still love her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh so she is so because she's struggling to focus at work to do talk about her creamy butter because she's like, hey Jackman's got some creamy butter waiting for me at home uh and so and then uh, that butter at home turns out to be farmer's bounty margarine (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, so patrice meanwhile is like eaten up because charlie is like calls her and puts leopold's advice and like modernizes it just enough where it's not weird and he's just very earnest about this is how he feels like i think you're really cool in the way you light up a room and like And so she's like, yeah, let's go get dinner. I actually did really like this scene Mm -hmm. because it didn't fall into some like weird old timey alpha male thing. It was like, no, just be like sincere. Yeah, that's all. He's literally like, you just need to be sincere. Don't just try to like poppycock. Yeah. And uh, she's like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, So they go out to dinner and meanwhile, she goes to a nice dinner. She reaches the back of the closet to get a dress to go out to a rooftop dinner with a personal uh, violin performance. Where does he get the money to pay this man? Probably from Ron Stewart's apartment. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, and they're... Stewart also locked up in a mental institution. <laughs> yep. Yes. And nobody cares. Uh, and so they're having this this romantic dinner, you know? Is this where I wrote, why does he cool? Yummy dinner. Why does he <laughs> space space cool? Is this about when he makes breakfast? No, yeah, maybe that's the breakfast one because you yeah. have a magical dinner. Magical dinner. Magical so dinner. This was a three we recording are. weekend. So this is that We're third round little... of notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this movie, I was like, okay, this is a pretty straightforward movie, yeah. you know. Yeah, they're uh, having a great time at dinner. They're chatting. They're dancing. They're chatting. They're talking about, he's like, she's like, I'm not good at love. He's like, maybe you just haven't found the right one. Uh-huh. Which, honestly, this is a nitpick. I was like, he would have said something better. He would have said something like, love finds you. You know, he would have been a little more poetic. Yeah, a little more poetic, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Hashtag not my Leopold, you know. Uh, <laughs> she's like, oh, I'm not very good at dancing. He's like, well, you seem pretty good, you know. It's romantic. It's cute. Mm-hmm. Um. The way he is looking at her while they're dancing and she's like giggling. She's like, she can't look at him, but he's like so intense. I was like, that's romance, baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's giving like the hand brush and Pride and Prejudice. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, I love that movie. Uh, so they, this is where I wasn't sure if they slept together. Because yeah. the next morning he's like in the apartment making breakfast and she wakes up in bed and I'm like, and she's like, presumably naked. Yeah, I uh, I don't get the vibe that he would sleep would, with her. Yes, and because later in the movie they sleep together, quote unquote, because they literally just they yeah. spoon, um, clothes on. But also, Charlie also comes back or wakes up, and he sees uh Leopold putting the dishes in the dishwasher. He goes, wait, wait, wait don't run it wait until she wakes up and i'm thinking oh that's nice because you know he doesn't want to wake her up with the noise of the no it's so that she can see you do it and i laughed so hard because i was like you know what if that if literally if i saw that if lyle did that i would i would be so happy i'm like oh thank you yeah that was that is actually (laughs) smart I was He's like, playing oh my 3D God, chess. I'm a 2001 rom-com heroine <laughs> that I would fall for that. Aww. Uh, there is a lot of rom-com moments because there's a part where she slips and gets coffee. There's a couple times where she slips. 
so she's so clumsy she's so bella swan uh yeah the 2000s gravity was different (laughs) it's like in back (laughs) to the future you keep saying everything's heavy there's something wrong with the earth's gravitational pull uh so yeah so he there's also something Stuart earlier was like get these photos developed and they're like we're gonna oh. shit about you Stuart uh <laughs> yeah uh so he is like where are we okay so magical dinner they have this weekend where they frolic around they do romantic things she shows them around the city he's like the bridge is still here you know uh they're falling in love you know they're kissing on the mouth um <laughs> that that's a, she like believed him or yeah. still, i think yeah, she does point. believe him at this point okay yeah yeah i think that like i think she does and she doesn't like she does because like he seems genuine otherwise and i think she like wants to believe in this fantasy yeah that she thinks is a fantasy uh but then, like, her, like, realistic side is also probably in the back of her mind, like, mm. and she's going to want to use it as an excuse for whenever he yeah. eventually does something she doesn't like. Like, she's going to be like, you know what? I knew it. And she yeah. does. Because um, Charlie's also like, hey, you can stop fooling around with me. You know, I love that you're in character. I love that you're method. Uh, yeah. And he's like, no, like, this is, or he's like, I'm the man who loves your sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. Wow. Yeah. So, so charming. Yeah. Uh, and so they're having a great weekend. They see his old house and he just, they're walking in. And at first I was like, is this just somebody's house that they're just walking in? She's like, I did too. I why are like, you, we can't barge in like this. And you're like, why is it unlocked? It's New York. Yeah. Right. Uh, and he finds where he stashed his mother's ring. Yeah. All his um, stuff. Which I'm sure now that's, that's worth a pretty penny um yeah also during the weekend i guess this is sort of like maybe right after this they're like out on her little balcony thing like the fire escape yeah um and they're all of a sudden this is the first time that we see this she's like oh yeah you see that guy in that apartment he listens to the soundtrack of breakfast at tiffany's and (laughs) then all up to midnight and then he goes to sleep and they watch that together it's like oh that didn't happen we didn't see that earlier no. and then two minutes later i'm gonna skip ahead in time we're time traveling really quick okay in the movie when they do their little quick breakup maybe maybe four minutes of the movie has passed we're getting that call back to the the yeah. moon river song and i'm like that just happened i'm not sentimental about that at all it's supposed to be i think her fear of being sad and alone mm. yeah but it's the sentimental moment of like they just shared yeah. that four minutes goes by and it's like i'm not sentimental about it at all i cannot wait <laughs> till we get to the descendants franchise then because that oh, is the most <laughs> egregious use uh are you telling me they use moon river uh no they use flashing back to things that are maybe less oh. than a minute old love that oh yeah. i love when i love when movies do that yeah. that's different because that's like a flash right <laughs> yeah this is literally like we're just we have a call back call back um yeah because they have the flashing forwards of that stuff yeah they're filming this commercial on a sunday terrible why would and you do that there Is was that no normal? there's no underwear named sunday because of god oh. let alone commercials <laughs> filmed yeah meg ryan so they they're filming the commercial and he tastes it and he's like this is disgusting. This is pig swill. You can't promote this. And he like storms off of set and she's like, you just got to promote it. He's like, have you tasted it? She's like, yeah, it's diet. It's it tastes diet. bad. It's not supposed to be good. He's like, how can you promote lies? Because also there's something earlier where he's like, oh, research. That's a good thing for a woman to be in. It suits the feminine mind. Uh, and she's charmed by that. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? That Whenever I want Hannah to do the research for an episode now, I'll text her that. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to. That's a, that's our code phrase. It's like, yeah. can it's you like, use your feminine mind real quick? Yeah, you're like, hey, I'm really busy. I need you to use your feminine mind. <laughs> this hard for my big boy brain to do the googly googles, you know. Uh, uh, that's have so us on your alpha male podcast. <laughs> I am dying. Oh my god. Um, 
what was I gonna say where are we oh yeah <laughs> okay I do I do support what he's saying here he's like I'm a man of integrity I'm not going to sell something that I myself wouldn't buy yeah so he's like, like you know what? I believe in that you have mm. all the integrity or all the comforts of the of modern life but no integrity yeah like, that wow. is a cutting thing to say I especially felt, to a, a modern woman i mean modern I woman red. in advertising i felt yeah. red based on like you know like i guess there's no ethical consumption under capitalism but still you know like we're all right exactly that's the other thing is he doesn't understand he hasn't been fully well, introduced to that con well I mean, no, yeah, he would have. Th- this is when the british were like invent not invent like inventing and implementing capitalism yeah in this unrestricted sense but, but he's he was living in america right after he, like capitalism uh, i mean right capitalism. after the civil war so yeah yeah he though is an aristocrat so right. his he would actually be a have a pre-capitalism idea of wealth and class and the concept right. of god made you rich born rich so you're better but because of that like the, with great power comes great responsibility thing you have to like okay yeah good so, so he would kind of not fully understand get, yeah i think you could argue whether or not there's ethical consumption under capitalism yeah yeah i mean there's no his consumption was not ethical no. like his role in society what he consumed but his he wouldn't have thought of it that way you know right um anyways so the empire okay but he is like mad and then he agrees because she's upset they like do finish the commercial right yeah. i he, think so yeah. because well they have their argument she goes back in and then it cuts to them in the taxi on the way home and she's being like mm, we we just had the weekend you know so I, tomorrow's a new day yeah she because she has the sunday scaries yeah, major, i said right? that too <laughs> uh and uh yeah so but so she is like this isn't gonna work out right uh meanwhile Stuart, did we've talked we they sort of slept together at one point mm-hmm. early you know where we he yeah we talked about that yeah so Stuart is free because the woman believes him at the mental institution uh he's like there's things bigger than us and she's like yeah and so she just lets him go, I guess. Um, he says a nice monologue too. I was like, I was feeling. I was, I was, I was honestly like, I, I get it. I did yeah. believe. Like, and that he, nurse or whatever she was, like, she was so good in that moment. Yeah, she was crying. She's like, I believe you. Yeah, because he's like, uh, you know, I saw what other people couldn't see. You know, I was a dog that saw a rainbow. And the other dogs didn't believe me. And I was like, oh, that was really, yeah. I was like, oh my God. He's, he's like, because dogs are colorblind. <laughs> but like the rest of that, like, I was like, that's such a weird monologue, <laughs> but like impactful. And I was like, oh my that's God. the kind of thing you would do at an but, audition, like that monologue. There you I go. know. New monologue just dropped, actors. From 2001. But the, I, for a second, thought the nurse was going to be a time traveler because she had a period face. And I was like, she is a woman from that ball and she made it here and she's doing this. And that's why she's going to believe him. Got because it. if there's okay. all these portals or like maybe she also time travels. I don't know. That I, I just... forgot that we talked about period face. And when you said that, I was like, you thought that you could tell she was on her period? Oh my God. no no that's uh, what something I, inter- I internalized very deeply is when my mom explained what periods are to me she was like you are not to ask anyone if they're on their period you are not yeah. to joke about your period these periods you're not to bring it up and so I mean I don't act weird when people bring it up themselves I'm not like oh yeah. but I'm just it's never something I go to I know I never I what- it was like that didn't make sense, and then yeah, I was like, oh, "You're like out of character." Period face. Yeah, yeah. You're like, uh, Dur- you're like, you're like a writer. We got to rewrite this scene. That's not in character. Yeah. Uh, God. God. I know you're a DJ, but are you also a writer? Yeah. <laughs> um, so he is like he develops these photos, and he is and he's playing the piano because he took leopold back home he's like you got to get back home it's monday 
Gotta back get back to your time, invent the elevator. Gonna relive some things. So yeah. Hugh Jackman goes back in time, relives things, he's pissed. He's like, I guess I'm just gonna marry the wealthiest one. Tell me who you want me to marry. Mm-hmm. Um and meanwhile, and Stuart is playing the sad little piano, and he's and Charlie comes in and sees the pictures, and he's like, What? And they're like, whoa. And then now it's time for a big, we've had, we've had the disagreement. Now it's time for the big reunion where Kate is promoted by her shitty ass boss. They're at this gala and it's at the place because she's leaving Leopold messages, but he's gone. And so they're, they're at the gala at the place where he used to live. uh, And she's there. She's like, they're like, you have to go back, you know, like we saw you, you know, like, and she's like, I don't have time for this. I worked so hard for this promotion. I just got to talk. And they're like, they're like, Kate, Kate. And he's like, I'm going to make the announcement soon. Don't powder your nose for too long. It's like, would you not wait till she's in the room? No, and like ready to go. JJ, come on. Give this me JJ the jet plane. Dick. This guy sucks. <laughs> um, so really quick, because when they're. I guess this is actually when they're actually in the taxi on the way to the bridge. But Stuart does literally say that, like, this was all meant to happen. Yeah. Okay. The compossibility principle, right? self consistency principle. Stuart is like, yes, I was supposed to go back in time. Leopold was supposed to follow me, meet Kate, and then they were both supposed to go back. She was supposed to go with him. So this is, is that all happening according to plan? And that's so that's different than eternalism. No, eternalism is literally just that the physical past exists, the physical future okay. exists, and you can travel there. The compossibility principle is like everything that has happened cannot be changed. So, so the time traveler is limited. Yes. So self consistency principle, everything that should happen is happening like that's all the time traveler can do that's is make like those things happen. the song god's plan exactly. god's plan god's plan god's yeah. plan yeah. yeah drake knows all about it yeah okay it's um, fate it's basile he is mad who opposes the stars yes like he's yeah. like this is literally meant to happen because of the photographic evidence because it's written did in the not stars see her. a million miles away yeah Stuart did not see her, but he got the photos and she was there, you know? Oh my gosh, yeah. Because the camera, perhaps the camera was showing us uh, something in time that Stuart could not see. He couldn't even comprehend it, right? Wow. I know. Or maybe he was just so focused on... That too. (laughs) He was like, I'm in the fucking past. This is crazy. Oh my God, that's my ex-girlfriend. Yeah, Yeah, that wouldn't happen. (laughs) Yeah. So he, yeah, so they, she's giving this speech and she's like, we're going to get people what they want. People love to get what they want. And she sees the photos and she's like, and they're like, what? And then she's like, and you know, but sometimes you get what you want and it's not what you thought you wanted. And you really want something else. And you meet someone who understands you. And I, this is where I was like, this is you the don't classic understand each rom-com other. speech. Yeah. yeah. And I, sorry to the bir- the person who birthed the Declaration of Independence, Meg Ryan, but I I didn't buy it. I, don't, I was like, this is, I was like, I honestly, I would only buy it from Jennifer Goodwin. I'm going to say it. I don't she think Jennifer Goodwin there. could make this work. Because I feel because... like her career is built on people writing the, the, the most sentimental speeches and being like here. And she's like, all right, I'm yes. going to sell it. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to be but, Snow White. I'm going to be Bunny and Zootopia. I'm going to be in He's Just Not That Into You. I'm going to sell it. But, like, they don't have a lot in common. And here's... But he's hot. She's, she's going to get there and realize yeah. that she gave up proper plumbing. And granted, right. Jackman's so hot. I don't Deodorant. think I would do it. Deodorant! Oh, my God. Like medicine penicillin when was penicillin invented like oh is she gonna even survive childbirth oh we'll have to talk about children uh 1928 she's not gonna live that long (laughs) my god yeah so that's anyway 
So yeah, uh, yeah let me I did in. look up I did look up a timeline of women's rights. So this is before she would have her right to own and control property mm. in the UK. Um but I imagine it's not much different in the US. Uh she would it. be allowed to go to <laughs> medical school. <laughs> Okay. Like, sign some contracts for... <laughs> or like sorry I, I don't remember if this was mentioned but is there a, a possibility for her to go back or no. was it, like, that was it it well, was the time frame and this oh. time frame. so the he kind of says that like the wormhole it appears every once in a while and he like figured out when it was going to be there Right. And then he knew, okay, it's going to be here this time when I go, and then it'll be there Monday. But yeah, it's not... No. I mean, I think it's... I think it's assumed that it's closed. Like, it's... Or it's going to be, like, a really long time before... You know, maybe a different lifetime before it'll even open again. Right. Like his math, so... And it's not like she can communicate with him, like, hey, how's it going? When's the next one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... She, and no one else knows that technology or that information. At the I was going to say she could jump over the Brooklyn Bridge and find out. But... Well, okay. So this, she runs away from the event. She's just like, bye. And it's like, okay, you know, these people of New York who will probably always do having romantic moments like this and running off. Uh, and so she runs off. They're in the cab. They've got 23 minutes. Yep. Uh, until Before it closes. It closes. Um, you can tell this also was written by men because where's the fucking Darcy? Um, I'm like, why is every almost every character a man? Um, and so she gets to the bridge and like you have to cross this thing and leap in. And then she's like, you know, Charlie, like Stu- Stuart's like, I'm sorry, I was shitty to you. I was a shitty boyfriend, but I we were meant to be together so you could meet Leopold. You, so you like, can meet your one. I'm like, oh, now you're such a romantic. Yeah. Ugh. And so then. She yeah crawls across four years. Wow, um, it's like an Olympics game happened uh, while they were together. Yeah, but so she crawls across or walks across, and she's like, "Charlie, I love you forever." That was actually very cute. I actually do kind of like their relationship. Yeah, uh, and because I, I as much as I want to be like, I feel like movies never fully nail sibling relationships. This wasn't it's an egregious okay. offender. Yeah, this mm-hmm. this worked enough. I bo- I bought them as siblings. Um, and so she, then the cops are like, oh my gosh, we have a jumper. And they're like, oh, and then she's gone. And so I'm like, yep. do people think she just ran? And killed herself. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's hope, what I'm thinking. I hope JJ feels so fucking guilty about it. Yeah, because I mean, if you think about it, she was just given this promotion. She tripped on stage. Uh, You know, she was sexually harassed. So it's like, like people would come up with you know why they think she did it um because what i mean are her brother and stuart really gonna be like no she didn't die she time like, traveled yeah they're honestly not gonna do that. they just need to frame that jj sexually harassed or not frame maybe he did it and let's be like and like he'll be blamed and just like yeah or like it's sim- more simple than that it's just like she actually wasn't ready for the pressure of this job and so she yeah like couldn't take it, it you know like it's yeah it, it's, it's crazy to think it's like okay how are they going to settle the present so that this works i guess that like this this movie is so about like the ending and it does not consider the ramifications of yeah. all that it unleashed at all because if she goes back in time she's running through the street as an unchaperoned woman because there's a whole thing earlier where he's like you're going it's with almost this man unchaperoned uh-huh. it's almost midnight she's sleeveless sleeve her shoulder you wouldn't have, she wouldn't have been allowed to go to homeschool prom in that outfit Mm-mm. i'm just saying let alone 1800 in like the 2010s yeah uh, so no, she... that would be like that would be a choice that'd be like a like gothic emo kind of <laughs> they're like a, yeah like, you know those like victorian kind of yeah yeah they're so like the, i the... loved it i love a risk like when it comes to fashion <laughs> count me in yeah but the 1800s new york 
I don't know if they love to fashion risk. No. They, Mar- no. No. <laughs> Marie Antoinette in Versailles, she'd probably be like, hmm, bold. Right. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, so she runs through the city, gets into the house. Also, earlier she got into that because she recognizes Otis. Earlier they got into the party because Charlie did the weird, this weird, no, 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 and then, like ran in. Uh, and so they, so she runs in and he's about to announce his engagement and he sees Kate and he's like, I choose Kate McKay of uh, the of Massapequa. Yeah, of the Mc, the McKays of Massapequa. Yeah. And so, and then they make out. In, in front, front of, of all these other Victorians. Yeah. These people are the opposite of sexually free. And it's like, <laughs> wow. How is she going to, like, what are the records going to be for their marriage? Where they Can they find the baptismal record? Okay. Just saying. Here's, this is so, why it makes more sense. Oh, but I don't know. There's even more records. To me, it makes more Google. sense for they the night... Google. They did need Google. It makes more sense for the knight to go to live in Vanessa's time and because he learned the magic of Christmas than for Meg Ryan to go in the past. Yeah, because he isn't gonna lose any rights. He's probably he's gonna have even more rights. He's about to invent he the elevator. Okay. Yeah. So they they start broke broke, right? Because she has no money, he has no money, but he's gonna invent the the elevator. So I guess they're gonna have like oodles of money, right? But she can't work. She can't. Have no, ha- like, I don't. You know what? I don't want to be like too dismissive of all the women in that time and all the interesting, amazing, cool things they did. I'm, but I'm not gonna say it wouldn't be a shock. But, My so I Philip, think a shock. But you know, this like, movie is trying to say that like the stress and pressure of being a modern woman is too much and that Meg Ryan just wants to not have to worry about owning property <laughs> taxes I don't want to pay taxes yeah. yeah um so speaking of records you know baptismal records so you say yeah. do Leo and Kate have children mm-hmm. okay does this mean that she literally creates her ancestors who then in a few generations, then create her. No, because she's Skin not related to him. The egg. No, 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 no. But how does she exist? If because she... she's related from, uh, she's unrelated to him. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about incest. <laughs> I'm saying, listen, okay. she exists in present day. Yes. But she goes to the past where she was always meant to be after she was born. Yeah. But so she goes in the past. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do they have children? Is yes. she creating ancestors? Of others, not of herself. But they are of her still. People who existed before. Yeah, I mean, ancestors and that they, people in the But here's the thing, we also don't her. know that they're not related. It's never suggested. I mean, yeah, but we're not just going to assume they're related. She's a McKay of Massapequa. Do they move to Massapequa? I ask these questions because there is a paradox called the bootstrap paradox or the information loop, which refers to uh, a paradox in time travel when in any event, like an action, information, an object, even a person, causes itself as a consequence of retrocausality or time travel. One of the examples that I will give you is uh, from the research. I found the movie Somewhere in Time starring Christopher Reeve, 1980. This old woman gives this man a watch. And he travels back in time and gives that woman, when she's younger, this watch. Thus, the watch has no discernible, traceable origin. So while she was technically born in the 20th century in Massapequa but she goes back to the past she is a past Kate McKay of Massapequa creates the ancestors that then create her later she creates herself 
and that's feminism. <laughs> but no, <laughs> isn't it so crazy? There's Alex no is way so to. I need just... to phone a friend to answer. The <laughs> There's honest. no way to prove that they're not related. Like this is just a, a a thought experiment. But like, isn't that fucking crazy? And when I saw this, I started thinking about that. I was like, whoa. And then I was doing more research, and I was like, oh my god, this paradox literally describes what I'm thinking about. So yeah, there's your little mind fuck, big mind fuck. I don't know. So so deep in your analysis, it is amazing. Oh, I thank love you. The way you think. This... I've learned. So thank much. you. I wish you were here last night. <laughs> <laughs> Get some more support for all. Anything. I mean, that was crazy. But um, processing all this information, it's wonderful, and it's gonna make me rethink it. Now I want to see it again. Exactly. You're, I was thinking. Oh. I was like, I want to see the movie and see if we see kate in the beginning in that ballroom scene oh uh, i didn't even think about that yeah i also like I, something yeah like you see like yeah. a pass of her dress or something yeah. like yeah like very subtle mm-hmm. like you really have to look for it real kate and leopold fans know really, yeah i also <laughs> loved her hair at the end i do want to point out that because we were critiquing the haircut at the end i was like oh, she looks so good mm. oh yeah she would never blend in it's going to take yeah. forever for her to grow out those highlights. Yeah. What is she going to do? She's yeah. literally going to look like a woman at a time. She's going to be a hat person. She's <laughs> going to be a hat person. Yeah. Well, I mean, married women, I think we're expected to cover their hair. So well, depending, depending, I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, I am. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, it is an interesting thing of like, you have to embrace for this, this woman has to embrace the past and like past gender roles and like the like the victorian era victoria like you know reject working and pants and stuff and like go back to this time in order to find love and happiness right and if you contrast that corsets corsets Um, yeah um what are the things that you wear on your waist to make the skirts bustles yes i mean it's all different She's going to have to embrace that. So if you compare it to a night before Christmas, right? This night has to like, yes, Vanessa has to learn about love. He has to learn about like the, his des- his density, if you will. His <laughs> destiny was Vanessa Hudgens, a school teacher. So that's, a, I mean, that's a much simpler movie. His destiny was Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. Like it was more just like he, he had to learn that like, that's what the quest worth fighting for was her love, you know? Right. And so that is like an easier sell of like how he's going to adapt. And then if you look at Elf or Enchanted, right? Like there, Elf is a human. He doesn't belong in the North Pole, buddy. He has to go and become an adult in the human world. Yeah. You know, uh, Mowgli has to leave the jungle in Jungle Book. You know, uh, in Enchanted, once she's like an Eve, it's like once she has the knowledge of good and evil of like, modernity she can't go back yeah. and so she has to like she embraces modernity you know she yeah. is like enchanted is almost the reverse of this movie i mean edina menzel's character nancy goes back to magic fantasy land but it's but that's an easier sell because it's fantasy land there's talking animals it's a musical you know like whereas yeah. she's going back to like the past our past I've heard of like, well, you just make it work if you're in love, right? Like I once heard this story about this person that was like, I went on vacation and I met this woman and we didn't speak the same language, but we like fell for each other. Oh my gosh, and Jason Derulo. It was, I was, I was listening to this, like, how is this possible? And yeah, they were just like, you, like, no one will be able to understand this connection we had. And we, we just try to make it work. And we were in love and like, no matter what you make it work. And so yeah, there's like people that feel like that, like you just make it work and you just do whatever it takes, you know, but is love everything. And I think she needed to pause. (laughs) Yes. I mean, I think the because actually I do have a friend who that also happened to her where she fell in love with a guy who basically only spoke Italian, very little English. And like, they end up getting married. They have a kid like, and like, obviously like they've learned each other's languages more now Mm -hmm. through this process, but like they really like connected in different ways. And so, 
I think that is like, I can understand that, but I think really it is like, we, we say that 2001 was a different time. You know, the gravity was different, but like, (laughs) this is literally the Victorian era compared to like pre nine 11, pre nine 11 America, for goodness sakes. So it's like, I, I personally think that she's going to be there and she's gonna be like, okay, when do you invent the elevator? He's like, I'm sorry. She's like, okay, when do we get our money? He's like, Ooh, yeah. Um, I still gotta figure it out and then I gotta sell it to people, you know. Because also, like the elevator was really just for the rich for a while yeah. before it like, kicked off. So it wasn't like a big money maker right away. So I don't know. It's <clears throat> I think she's gonna get there and realize she made a huge mistake, and then she's gonna have to figure something out. But yeah, I, I mean, as we know, love we know I love love. Uh, true love conquers all. I gotta fight for love. Gotta make it work. I am a believer in that. But at the same time, I think the power. It's not the. It's like the the time difference. The power differentials is. She's giving up everything she's not his equal anymore yeah and she's giving up everything and he has to give up nothing nothing and so and it's not like she's giving up everything for something she also always wanted like if you look at the little mermaid right where like ariel wants to be on land like that's what she wanted every and like eric's just like the the inciting incident but like she wanted to be on land regardless you know now she just also wants this cute boy She's also 16, you know, but like, and there's also magic and she can still talk to all her friends. You know, it's like a, the sac, like the sacrifice here is so on her. And it's also that the movie doesn't acknowledge it is what makes it feel weird to me is that it's like, it's just this thing that modern life is like tiring her out and she needs to go back to something new. And they're too scared to like really fully make that statement or make any kind of statement. Yeah. I think we compared it to like a bunch of other like elf enchanted and i'm gonna and even the night before christmas and i'm gonna be like i think those movies work because a they're they're a little clearer even if they're both they're all very like simple movies you know they're clearer in like what they're trying to say and because it you have to leave the fantasy wendy has to leave neverland dorothy has to leave oz you can't end by going into the fantasy right that's why i don't uh, one of the things i didn't like about the jungle book remake was like they oh they have mowgli stay with the animals which is like what you want because that's fun but you also need to like go back like he needed to yeah, be with jungle Bruce book is a Pine. coming of age story yeah like they need to come of age um yeah i mean this actually takes us into our discussion about the protagonist it's like okay well what what does meg ryan's character want like she wants her promotion. Okay, but going back to the past isn't gonna get her promotion. So okay, what does she actually want? It's never clear. Because That's why I don't think she is the protagonist. See, even though I, she's the one that makes the sacrifice. She makes the change. I think it starts though Leopold is our protagonist because we follow him, but he is just kind of vibing. Yeah, like what does he want? He doesn't yeah. he I, I think at a certain point he starts to want her, and I guess she starts to want him but like but we also don't meet her for like the first five or six minutes of the movie at least this is where i think that we have a protagonist that like may have switched yeah like in the middle of the movie somewhere but it's it's so strange because like i don't know what either of them really want besides each other but it's like that just serves the end of the movie it doesn't seem yeah I don't really ship them as a couple. If like if, well, if rooting for the protagonist is shipping them, I just I ship myself with Hugh Jackman as Leopold. That's what I call like that's why I think what's successful about this movie is I do feel that like swoon where the energy of like he's on the horse and I he ship says him creamy and butter. Charlie. <laughs> they have more. And in not common. necessarily as romance, but I mean, maybe, but also just like bros, you know, because they yeah. do they actually have stuff in common her they don't have anything in common like yeah. i don't know what, what do you think alex 
Yeah, I agree. I feel like their humor, like the brother and him, they just got along really well. They like went through something. They had an experience out in public or with the with the ladies where they like he he did some. Ah, I don't know. Yeah, that is hard. I, I don't know. I felt like there was more bonding with her, the brother. I don't know. I had this experience like early on in my relationship with my boyfriend right now where um, like we were river rafting and I, we both fell off the boat and it was like really creepy. It was just like, whoa, there was a lot going on. And he like pulled me on the boat and we're like, oh, wow. Like it just leveled up my, my relationship in a way it's like, whoa. And so I feel like that's what they were trying to do with that horse scene where it's yeah. like, just like, oh, you got me flowers or something. It's like, whoa, this was semi-life-threatening. That could have been dangerous, potentially. And then it just led to something great, thank God, a wonderful outcome. And um, I feel like that's what they were trying to achieve with that moment, like a big bonding moment. So yeah. with that said, that was kind of the only moment where we really felt a strong connection between the two of them. Whereas the brother, it was like slow and steady and constant and just vibing and wonderful throughout the whole film. So yeah, yeah. you make a good point with the horse, with the dinner, the dance. It feels like this movie is just hitting all the beats, but the connective tissue is really strange. <laughs> Yeah, I I wonder if it was maybe the chemistry between Meg Ryan and Hugh Jackman. You know, I think they're both obviously super talented performers. So it could just be they didn't gel or like the story wasn't giving them what they needed to gel or like. Also, like the movie was two hours. Like you can't even argue that it was like, well, there wasn't that much time. Like how much could you fit in a two hour film? A lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the, and I, we always say we talk about the antagonist, but what does that have to say about JJ, but you, um, yeah. but I, yeah, I guess my kind of like, what is this movie saying? What is it? And it's like, I didn't like hate watching this. I wasn't like, oh, no. this sucks. I also didn't like love it either, but I, I did really love Hugh Jackman's Golden Globe nominated performance um, and those white pants. But uh, yeah, my kind of thing with this was like, okay yeah but I, I couldn't something about it didn't get me to the like oh love is everything like kind of fluffy headspace the way even which is like I think texturally a worse movie but somehow works for me more like the night before Christmas is where it's like because that it's like uh, that movie is like at a dumb level where I'm like what you know and this has enough stuff that could be real that I like I have higher expectations and I'm mm. like, and I'm also just like, I'm worried for Meg Ryan living in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why do you think this movie is so beloved, though? Like, it really has. <sighs> I think it's Hugh Jackman. Ball. Hugh Jackman and Meg Ryan. Like, Meg Ryan is, again, queen Great of rom coms. But yeah, he is so, so good. I think she's fine. She's being Meg Ryan, whatever. Yeah. There's nothing really special about Kate. She is literally yeah, just she... insert Meg Ryan. Uh, it's like Meg Ryan has played similar but way better characters in a bunch uh, of other movies. Absolutely. And maybe it was also that element of like I had mentioned before where it doesn't necessarily feel like completely PG. It's like somewhere in the middle PG, PG 13 kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So like anyone could watch it. And so that might add to it as you well. You put it on TV, you know, it's you can silly. watch it with the family, you know, like it's yeah yeah you know so it's like yeah i i to be like this movie's trash like isn't true but i don't think it really did it yeah. for me and i guess that's the question was that your fantasy and i put in my notes question mark question mark question mark because i really i was like i think on an objective level like of the the double meaning did i like this movie i'm gonna i think it's more of a no but is it my fantasy to be swept up by Hugh Jackman dressed like that on this horse? I'm going to say, yeah. We're like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hundo P, you know, sign me up. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I love this movie because it is so silly and I love laughing at it. But I also do find myself charmed by it because I'm like, these characters are so weird and so charming like I love Breckenmeyer's Charlie Stewart is still kind of like 
weirdly charming Hugh Jackman obviously um love Darcy you know and Meg Ryan's Meg Ryan and I think Bradley Whitford plays his character just the way it needs to be it's not overtly creepy but it's creepy enough um you know it's like it has the beats that I'm looking for in a rom-com specifically from this era but I also love the fact that it's not quite fitting together and there's something fun about that so yes this is my fantasy because I do love watching this movie yes it's my fantasy because Hugh Jackman is gorgeous uh yeah yes all around I guess you have to agree with that as well it's it's a fun romp yeah so you so yours is like yes this is just a fun time that's kind of good that's the Alex Alamani seal of approval <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's like now that you ask me again man i think because who knows maybe because i work in the industry i just i know all that goes into movies and it's just like really really hard to make a, a it's movie yeah in front of your face um and a note just goes by or it's like whoa we didn't see this serious problem and it's like how we've been sitting on this film day in day out like how didn't we see this you know and I just firsthand now understand I'm like oh yeah that happens so I have a lot more like forgiveness for uh different films and so overall I think just because I was young and I loved watching this movie over and over again it was like the one of the VHSs I had um I'm gonna have to give this uh 10 bags of popcorn or whatever <laughs> love it i love it yeah I, I, i'm just gonna stick with it i loved it but uh and i know it had its problems but um i think everything you guys have brought up today is just such solid thinking and you guys should just honestly do some freaking negotiating or like i don't know you guys should be on some films and <laughs> on teams and adding your opinions and like little oh. agents little... oh yeah <laughs> hire cullen and i to uh talk about your script and uh we'll we'll help you figure it out figure Let's it out be- it. because i agree with alex and that like yeah. i never like it is so hard to make a movie and so i never want to be like what kind of idiot wouldn't think of you know i mean yeah. every once in a while there'll be a movie where i'm like i hate this but generally it's listening because i'm like maybe this just isn't working for me mm-hmm. and i think i i don't think it i could even say this movie didn't a hundred percent not work for me but i was like oh you know like because there are ever like there'll be movies where i'm like oh i love that people be like that movie's garbage and i'm like mm, okay okay you know that happens all the time you're like oh you like that movie that was so bad i was like oh okay. yeah so like you barely ever see any rom-coms anymore like people are just too scared to make them to mess up it's it's almost never happened um what was that last one that anyone uh, but you sydney sydney sweeney yeah Yeah. that was a movie that i saw and was like oh that was really fun and people were like that movie was so bad and i was like yeah (laughs) yeah i feel like if you're gonna go see a rom-com these days like they're there's streaming just yeah things just you're expecting out of them and it's like you can't be expecting like the best thing you've ever seen like that yeah rom-coms are about like creating a weird situation two people get stuck in and they're shenaniganing out of it and they are in love or they fall in love it's like it's about the chemistry and the fun. Yeah, it's it's just about it's it's about the foreplay. You know, yeah. the plot is really just like meh. You know, it's just about seeing two hot people be hot together. I, I don't know. Like that's that's, <laughs> that's 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 why like I can watch uh How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days any day of the week. Two weeks notice, any day of the week. Problematic stuff, hell yeah. Okay. But it's also yeah. like I'm watching two hot people be hot together. I'm here for it, you know. I mean, even when Harry met Sally is more of like let's watch a hot person and a funny person. Still love that movie. Listen, okay. He as a young man, like, you know what? I'm like, you know what? Maybe I would. Love the sweater, 
Yeah. You know, he he's a good looking dude, Billy Crystal. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh Alex, uh, is there anything you'd like to plug? Honestly, this podcast. <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. I love you guys. I'm so <laughs> grateful to be on. Wow. Hopefully did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were yeah, you were great. Brilliant. Love it. Thank uh, you so yeah. much. We Call had so much fun. For, if you guys ever talk about Pride and Prejudice, let me know. Well, well, I, I mean, think... Jane Austen is not fantasy. We but... could do Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and kind of yeah. do it that way too. So. Yeah. I, I'm not going to – I never want to say a hard no because there's so many different Listen, things Listen, we're going to gonna find a way to do Marie Antoinette, okay? Yeah. I definitely want to do happen. like a biopic month at some point. My yeah, gosh. I know. If I can talk about science, movie, yeah, I am obsessed with that movie, Marie Antoinette. You know how like these days you could just like rent a movie, or it's on m one of the many stream um, streaming platforms. Um, yeah. yeah, I straight up bought that movie recently. I was just like, I need to have this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some movies you're like, I just need to have regular it's access. On, yep. <laughs> yeah but yeah. anyways you guys are awesome thank you so much thank you thank for being you. here i'm also so glad we had someone who had seen this movie many times and that you still like found something new about it um i'm happy to we're happy to have shared that with you <laughs> awesome. i haven't seen it in like over 10 years but i used to watch it like no one's business on the way to school <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, if you, on Apple Podcasts could uh, take a, a, a moment out of your time. Time is crazy and I it's eternalism. And in that eternity, I hope part of it is you writing us a five-star review uh, mm -hmm. and putting it on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify or uh, Audible or wherever you listen. Um, yeah. And get, spread, the, spread the word. Yeah, spread the word like awesome creamy listeners. butter on oh, your margarine on your yeah uh, <laughs> um yeah and if you're on youtube hi hello you can smash that like button smash the like button hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get notified when we drop another episode cool, cool, so cool, next cool. time we are talking about time traveler's wife with uh, rachel mcadams uh yes, Rachel McAdams. Wow. I mean, she's actually in both. You know that oh and about time. She's oh the time traveler's wife. You yeah. know, from Kate and Leopold, I've run into three of the actors. Meg Ryan, Brecken. He opened the door for me one time. So oh, nice. Head. So, so sweet. sweet. And then yeah, oh. Chris at uh IKEA. So yeah. I I was shook. I was like, wow, this is never That's happened wild. To me. Three people. But yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, so Time Traveler's Wife is next week. And uh, we're going to talk about some more time travel stuff. I kind of have a vague idea. But we'll all be surprised when we get to the episode. Um, yeah, because I haven't figured out exactly what we're doing. I've got some ideas. But yeah. Yeah. So follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Not My Fantasy Pod. And... Get those updates. Get those new episodes. Uh, get those memes. Get those memes. Those delicious, juicy memes. Yeah. Uh, like the picture of Alex. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you at another time. Time. Oh. Bye. Bye. Whoa. Whoa.